it's never the good that's put out. It's that controversy. That's what he's looking for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can be soft, tender, and still be extremely competent. Is that what you think of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> soft, tender, but competent. <laughs> alcohol, you know, I think has been marketed all too well. Especially wine is good for you. Kind of marketing last twenty years. It absolutely bogus. There's no truth to it whatsoever. My life is dictated less by my timings, but more by the timings. Financial mm-hmm. events happening in stock markets. Oh, I mean, everybody says overall health, overall health, and uh-huh. overall health. <laughs> 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 Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of our podcast, which was an experiment. Uh, to begin with, I think we have three new people today. Uh, Nitin does not need to introduce himself to me, but it'll be nice if each of you can say uh, two or three minutes about your life. None of you need an introduction. No one more than you. Like I think <laughs> the entire world knows you, but still maybe two minutes. Starting with Mukesh. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. I am Mukesh. Uh, I grew up in a small town. Haridwar. Don't, don't give us like the <laughs> <laughs> don't give us like the school interview kind of thing. Ah, uh, batao kya bolna chahiye? Ta puche better hai yeah. na. Acha hai na? To aap ye bataiye ki aap Bangalore kab aaye? Bangalore me what is the most fun thing you have discovered about Bangalore? Who are your friends in Bangalore and what do you do weekends in Bangalore? Wow, I never thought about that <laughs> that deeply. <laughs> Bangalore I I came here in 2007 with the aspiration of starting a startup I was in Bay Area before and trying to do a startup for 10 years didn't work so I figured ki chalo silicon valley mein bahut competitive hai yahan pe nahi ho raha india ja ke like try karte hain came here um, very uh, the environment was amazing you know there was lot of startup vibe I think you guys are the early pioneers you started way back I think you know before 2007 but uh, that uh, you know opportunity to create a startup in bangalore in 2007 what brought me here what i liked about bangalore is weather i think you know all of us love bangalore weather you know 10 months out of 12 months as you know what in 20s so i love that uh, all the lakes in bangalore i have always been to you know very active so i like going to all these Where lakes for the walk lakes? which lakes are you talking about Harlur Lake, Kaikandra, Kaikandra, Halli Lake, <laughs> and many others. I should remember name, but there are lot, this nice, beautiful tracks. You know, there's two kilometer runs, so I've had countless walks and runs and long distance running around that. In the weekends, I I'm a, I'm a startup person, so I end up working unfortunately. But uh, weekend morning, I'm generally in the gym, working out. Evening, spending time with my kids. I have always played you know sports so I try to find time to play some sport in badminton tennis I was an avid golfer for 5 6 years so there was an obsessive phase of golf uh, mostly at clover greens in the south side of bangalore yeah so much thing uh, we all know you for mintra right and then when you, when we after that we know you for cult yeah tell us a bit about how mintra came about and then how cult came about both were kind of accidents uh, mintra we were trying to do something very niche early on we used to sell this personalized t-shirt online when there was nobody online nobody wanted to buy personalized t-shirts you know definitely not online we did that for 3 4 years you know bounce around tried lot of experiments tried of but eventually we stumbled into you know fashion as a category um, long story maybe i'll cover that later but later but 2011 we pivoted into fashion and finally you know after 4 years of trying we were the right place right time things started to take off uh, went really well i think in 3 4 years we were the largest fashion retailer in the country 2014 merged with flipkart at some point i decided to move on from flipkart it's been 9 year doing retail for me and wanted to do something new and different so i thought deeply about what will i enjoy doing the most and also what i thought you know could be an opportunity for the future and uh, in 2016 i could see lot of signs uh, that health awareness is increasing but there are no really good solution at scale and that's basically started you know, cure for journey uh, we have gone through multiple things but eventually i think we end up building highly differentiated unique product in cult today we are by far the largest fitness chain in the country and i have had tremendous fun you know, doing that super thank you Anna, next. What do you want to know? So When I'll did I come to Bangalore? <laughs> <laughs> I was born in Bangalore and then I went no. to Mumbai. No, so. thank you. Firstly, for flying down to Bangalore, it's no, very no. kind. I have a few stories with Anna. Uh, I think the one time when we really connected and spoke a lot was that time in London, 
right? Like we had met a couple of times before, but uh, Anna's son, can I say that? Yeah, yeah. Anna's son is dating the daughter of a friend of mine. So I was at my friend's place having lunch and I didn't like really know that they were all going to be there and that they were dating and then comes in Anna with his son and my friend's daughter and we hung out for a bit yeah. and we made plans and we caught up after that and all of that. The one thing about you which I, I should say is very, very endearing is the way you treat this 20 to 35 year age group bracket yeah. guys and girls. I think uh, like amongst the people I know, there's Anil, there's Shetty, there's all these people who treat you as a friend and you're able to be with them, hang out with them and be amongst them like you belong in that group, which I think is really hard. And uh, yeah, so start from there and tell us yeah, a little bit about yourself. Uh, thank you. Thank you for that though. Uh, but yeah, um, I guess uh, I do because uh, I connect with them. You know, and generally for me, it's my fitness journey that helps connect. Uh, because uh, somewhere down the line, they see dad at home and then suddenly see me and they believe, why isn't dad like this? When he can easily be like that. You know, and that's where it starts from. So I think it's that respect for someone who's healthy, even though he's, you know, in his 60s, is where I connect. And then I like to listen, you know, and, and, and uh, kids like you who've, who've achieved so much. There's a, there, there's a feeling of pride every time I, I, I end up meeting you, talking to you, listening to your stories. And I believe that the that impossible is genuinely nothing. You know, he says he was in the valley. Everybody believes the valley is the place where, uh, uh, you know, life's change and, and destinies change. And suddenly you have someone who comes in here, moves from fashion, uh, then gets into fitness and has changed that, that journey. And I still remember when somebody told me about cult and uh, Mukesh taking over. I said, this is the place to be in and the right place. And then, then comes the pandemic. Does, people don't know how to, to hold on to it. And they said, you know, the business of gyms is over. Everything is over. But then post pandemic, it's wellness takes over completely. It's not just fitness, wellness. So I think for me, that my journey, uh, you know, connects to all this and the youth is because I, I started off as an actor, not believing that I was going to get an opportunity. This South Indian boy there doesn't speak the language. Of course, I sp spoke Hindi in school, but I managed to get through, you know, probably 40, 45 out of 100 when it came to Hindi. But my diction was never very good because we spoke Tulu at home. We never spoke Hindi, not a word of Hindi at home. So when I got into the business of cinema, thanks to my martial arts background, uh, I believed that I was going to be successful, like probably a Mr. Bachchan would. But then when the results come out, you see success at the box office, but you have a critique writing you off completely and saying you're wooden. And it, reality hits you so hard, uh, you don't know what to do. Take a step back uh, and then decide, you know what, the only way I can stay here is if I create an image for myself. What is my strength? action, work on it. But there are a lot of others who are doing action too. Then do debt defying stunts. Take that risk, let that family not know. But go every morning to do action, believing that either you're going to come back with a broken bone or you're not going to come back at all. Uh, it's a tough job, right? It is a very tough job. Being an action hero is a very, very tough job. I, I say that unlike even unlike all of us, yeah. where we go to work and in a way we earn a wage, periodically, you guys put in all the work and you have your result on one day. It's like writing an exam every year. True, and other and than that, people believe that it's a, it's, it's a very glamorous world. Mm. Glamour is only because you're on screen and there's extra love for you. Other than that, it is hard work. It, it, it's constant pressure. Today, the mobile phone. Whatever you do, every action of mine is being captured. Mm. And, and the way the virtual world is going. It's never the good that's put out. 
it's that controversy yeah. that that's what he's looking out. for yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> where he began yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he took a pot shot at you but uh, <laughs> i just wanted to warm you up <laughs> but but he is a brat he is a brat even otherwise you know so so expect that from him so so i love doing this amongst my friends he has seen this right so normally i will have a dinner with it's okay yeah. don't eight explain or 10 people. i didn't mind at all you <laughs> <laughs> get into the detail yeah. that's what he's trying to say okay yeah oh yeah uh, i'm interested okay so let me introduce him <laughs> yeah uh, what i hear about him before i came here was yeah. even his 8 year old <laughs> flips a, a packet of food and checks what the uh, the ingredients are how much fat how much uh, protein how much what and he's an obsessive fitness guy yeah. you know luckily obsessed. luckily for us me and nitin have shared a bedroom for maybe like <laughs> 16 17 years of my life <laughs> and uh, we've eaten the same food we've uh, shared the same clothes So if he's saying any bullshit about his fitness routine, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, where do I start? Yeah. So our parent, my my dad, I mean our dad was in the bank, and uh, he took us around the country. Um, we came to Bangalore in '96. Um, I I did my school here. I I went to an engineering college. I went. I took telecommunication engineering. Uh, the first year was all these common, you know, physics, chemistry, maths. The third semester, you know, the first class I went in, they were trying to teach signals and systems, and you know, all these waves. And I was like, "Dude, what's happening?" And that was really the last I saw of my college. And you know, and uh, I got introduced to trading the markets. I started trading. Um, Uh, to make the money, I, I did a bunch of things. I, I, you know, back in the day, I, I used to work in this, you know, these weekend, uh, you know, like the showrooms and etc. And uh, then I did multi-level marketing. So I was one of the first few guys doing multi-level marketing. And this was late '90s. Um, around 2001, uh, I went bust trading. I went joined a call center. Uh, I worked for three or four years. Nikhil is seven years younger, so he picked trading the markets like much before I did in, in terms of my age. So yeah, I think by 15, 16, he was already trading. Um, then uh, I worked in a call center between 2001 to 2005. Uh, Funnily enough, we worked in the same call center but at different times. I yeah. was there in 2003. He quit that one at in 2001. Yeah, I was. I was. You know, this is 24/7 customer dot com. You know, it's called. So I was among the first few guys who joined this call center. Um, and then yeah, I think Nikhil joined. It was like a really fun place. Yeah. Terrible pay, no money, <laughs> horrible night shift. But yeah. for the couple of years that I was there, I had so much fun. I no, I, I think I think I, I learned all my life skills really in yeah. the call center, because you know they were selling on the phone. People. Yeah, you know it is. Uh, I think I think you know looking back, the real skill set. I mean, that I think I've really. Gotten, I've learned in my life is selling on the phone. You know, just being able to sell. Because even today, as businessmen, you're constantly selling. You're you're yeah, constantly yeah. saying uh, something which can help you sell something, right? As in, so yeah. Anyways, 2005, I quit. I uh, started, uh, you know, like I became a franchisee of of a bigger brokerage firm. I think Nikhil quit in 2006, 7. He joined. Um, quickly realized that Nikhil is a better trader than I am because at that point of time. We were trading with the money, and I was also doing this side hustle of doing some broking business. Then, uh, you know, in 2008-9, I said, you know, if he's better th- than me in trading, why not he continue trading, and maybe I can go do broking uh, permanently. You know, as in, uh, so yeah. So 2010, we started Zeroda. You know, and uh, um, it started off as, um, I mean, it, it was not meant to be what it is today. You know, like I still remember the first email I had sent. I said. If we can get to 10,000 customers, we have arrived in life. You know, so uh, we are at you know like I think 1.1 crore customers today. You know, and we can't market ourselves just oh, because it's our name. Yeah. 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 No, but yeah, but but in the in the context, you know, like I've looked up to you so, through my life. You know, so you know because I've I've always, you know, been playing a sport. Uh, I've found. Playing a sport as my release. You know, I, I used to play a lot of basketball when I was younger. I hurt my knees, and then I cycled for a long time. Then uh, soccer, cricket. I mean, everything. And uh, and you're like, uh, I I remember, 
I think around the border time, yeah. I became even bigger fan because you know until then I was I was like a big fan of your body. But then yeah. you know after that, yeah. I think after that movie, it kind of your image went from just the body to you know yeah. acting no, as but well. But that 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 what took that took me to those first few years of because I had not learned my craft. I got an opportunity, I grabbed it, and didn't realize it's tough to stay out there, yeah. you know. And and also it was always. That South Indian actors never made it in uh, in uh, Hindi cinema. Right. You know, they of course they had a great first film, second film, but after that, you never sustained. And for me, it was very important that I learn my cra craft quickly before I was thrown out. And it's that image of an action hero that let me stay, got me films. I signed those films quickly, right. and learned my craft during uh, during work. And, yeah. and 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 lastly, you know, just talking. I think after Amitabh Bachchan, you're like the most beautifully aging actor in India. You know, so I mean, I haven't, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, I was talking actually with my wife that you know we were looking at Brad Pitt and George Clooney, and I was like, dude, how well they're aging. And then, you know, then suddenly you come on the scene, like, you know, and this, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, uh, so thanks, thanks for. I think you know, for all of us, I think it's an inspiration. You're like, you're like. See, these guys have knowledge in theory about how to be healthy. You're like the specimen. <laughs> like, no. Oh yeah, if you're you do like, what all you're like do. Sachin Tendulkar, these guys are commentators, <laughs> and coaches. Yeah. I think it's the discipline, discipline, and discipline that comes from, of course, watching uh, your parents. My father was my biggest hero, and still is. Nine-year-old restaurant coming into Mumbai. Achieving, of course, a lot of them came and achieved a lot because the opportunities were a lot more. But also working in places and then owning those very places, you know. So that's my biggest tie. That's my mantra. That's my uh, uh, cult and uh, all that that I see. L looking at him, uh, so of course it it comes from there. And you know, South Indian families, Indian smaller towns, we grew up watching our parents rather than uh, listening to them. But for me, it was also martial arts. Since I was mystery, my guru, who taught me what discipline was all about, who taught me what waking up early meant, how much you could achieve, uh, you know, knowing your own power and not using it, how patience, how to listen. I think that's what the old format of martial arts taught me. Whereas today it's all about go beat, 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 protect, fitness. Then it was about mind also and mind over body, which is the difference. And that's why I always tell friends of mine, you know, especially today in this virtual world where kids are all on the phone, anxious about things, send them into that real world. Let them let them do. When I when I was talking to you earlier, I, I said group. Right. Group is because you learn to win, you learn to lose, you learn to you learn to do things together as a team. So kids going out there. For me, if it's a two-year-old, I'd say send him to, if not a gym, a workout place. Because he needs to learn that hand-eye coordination. That's going to help him right. to do anything in life, catch a catch like that. Otherwise, you're lost. And the minute a kid you see like this, you know he's going to find it tough right. when, when he moves on in life. So I think I've learned to understand the smaller things in life. I'm a good listener also. I, mm -hmm. I listen, I take in. Even when I met you the first time, when you came with Amit, this name, uh, the surname Kamath, everything gave me a feeling of home. Mm -hmm. Everything gave me, and I'm proud of what the kids achieve. Mm -hmm. You know, I get emotional about it because I feel, oh, they are our own. And then, even if it's the first time, I I approach you like I've known you, Correct. you know, and that makes the uh, uh, things easier. So I think the simple things in life that one has done, not having a gym, but using basic equipment to to learn to train, realizing that it's not the equipment, it's it's the application of the mind to that muscle which gives it that result and not, nothing else. But how do you do that over forty years? Ah, I think uh, I, I I I guess because because of my passion and I've realized that, uh, you know, like they say that 21 day formula of, of, uh, of getting into fitness, first uh, you feel it and, and then, uh, uh, you know, you see it mm. and then you hear it. And the minute you start hearing it, mm. it keeps you going. Now, him telling me encourages me to go back and say, you know, let me continue doing that. Because if I can influence one kid to take up uh, health and wellness and fitness, and then go back home and tell dad or mom, Ki, look at dad and mom, uh, dad, look at uh, Sunil uncle. He's 62. 
at least try getting there. And then they start believing that, they, yes, that can happen. And what, what brings about that change? Food, you know? That is that biggest drug also that is being abused for anxiety. At the same time, the drug or, uh, 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 that is not being used at, as an antidepressant is exercise. And, and we're not using that, and it's it's available. So one is being abused, and the other is not being used. Yeah, but but since we are talking about health, I think one of the uh, in in my health journey, one of the things I did wrong through my, most of my life was really the food, mm. right? I mean, while Absolutely. I like you know, I think he's also been you know active, but I've played a lot more sport, etc. But as I remember, you know, like after a two-hour basketball game, I'll go and have like ten watermelon juice. Right, you know, not one and two, right? As now in, or back in know, the day? No, back in the day, right. right? So I probably am, you know, kind of negating everything that I've done already, right? So, uh, so those learnings, I mean, the funny thing, okay, like when I first went to the gym, there was no, there was no access to internet, there was no access to book. And my mom somehow convinced me that eating ginger garlic helps you get no muscle. So I used to go to the gym, come back and eat ginger garlic, like raw ginger and garlic. You know, and this is, you know, uh, in, the, in the late 90s, you know, so... Uh, but yeah, but but yeah, in terms of my health, I think... Uh, all the, uh, Seema, my wife, you know, she had... Uh, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, you know, in 2020. And uh, that's when I think, you know, like I got in serious about what goes into my body because you know a lot of research that went into it you know like saying what causes cancer and, and etc and then you know once i went in through the rabbit hole i was like you know food is really what essentially matters right as in um so yeah so i think i think you know what you rightly said i think uh, people don't you can't outrun a bad diet right as yeah, in yeah. you know yeah. and um so yeah, so I, I think I'm very particular about the food today, you know, in the sense I avoid eating outside food um, as much as possible. Uh, I used to binge drink before, um, you know, like every once in a while, you know, we'd all catch up and you know, once a friend's around, you know, it starts with one drink and then, you know, you suddenly binge drinking. But then, you know, the, the last two, three years, all the research I've done, I mean, I think binge drink, there's nothing more harmful that you can do to your body than binge drinking. I don't know. So, do you drink Mukesh? Used to. Uh, I was a regular drinker, never really a heavy drinker, but I was into my wine. I think I, over a period of time, I learned to enjoy my wine. But every time I'll drink, next day I'll pay the price. I'll have a terrible sleep. I'll wake up, you know, just feeling groggy and not up to it. I will definitely miss my workout. And whole day I'll feel like my brain is not working. Yeah. I'm like this, yeah. you know compromise, you know, person, you know, just there, but not really there. And then I'll remind myself, you know, is it really worth it? Do I want to do it again? Next will come by, next week will come by, next social occasion, then you start with, you know, one drink. Last year, I decided enough is enough. You know, I stopped, it's been nine months, I have not touched a drink. The intention is to not do a drink. And I agree with you, I mean, all the research I've seen, this alcohol, you know, I think has been marketed all too well, especially wine is good for you kind of marketing last 20 years and absolutely bogus is no truth to it whatsoever alcohol i mean i guess it, i can say on this podcast at this point i believe alcohol is ad, as bad as smoking it's only a matter of time before uh, i think science already caught up there is absolutely no dispute as far as science goes but the mainstream media and the communication has not caught up hmm. i think it's a matter yeah. of time so no but there's there's one point there right as in so thing is apparently most people die of loneliness and stress. I mean, that's really the yes, bigger killer than, mm -hmm. you know, cardio or, right. you know, mental and etc. Right? I mean, loneliness and stress. And then if a little bit of alcohol can get you over that. Now, the question is, is it, is it a safe enough compromise to make or not? Right? Because, uh, you know, if, if a drink is a reason for you to get together with friends, mm -hmm. um, can it bring down the stress in a way, helping you in some way, right? As in, I mean, there is that school of thought as well. I mean, but you need to be conscious of the fact that it's not good for you, you know, physically in any way. Yeah. But I can it somehow, yeah. you know, help you bring down your stress or, you know, help you get over any loneliness? And, and maybe the key is to keep it to, you know, just one drink. The problem is the inhibition, you know, goes down so much after the first drink. And that's when your troubles start. I mean, it's just, I think much easier to not drink than to have just one drink and stop, right? So that's 
like once the one becomes two or three and that's when you know i think you are yeah. well past solving for <laughs> loneliness and social isolation <laughs> and so another is never had a drink no no but then you are the chauffeur when you don't drink mm. you know with, with <laughs> friends you're driving them around i've never i never but what was them. the what was the thing in your head which made you not even want to have a sip i guess like i said my martial arts background and then heavy drinkers at times in the family and what they go through is is that and it like somebody you saw drinking heavily not necessarily impacted that hasn't impacted or you know that's not the decision but but then i've seen people and behaviors change mm. and people change and mm. and running a restaurant myself a bar myself mm. you know we used to work with dad and took care of the bar and and i i used to see mild timid guys mm. change with with a one drink with two drinks <laughs> with three drinks and the fourth drink you know and different personalities mm. so i think somewhere down the line i also saw too much of that and decided you know what it's better to stay away and then it became a challenge and then people started like i said started appreciating your your health then your career was dependent on 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 your fitness see i think last one week right like i saw so much content on fitness online and health The one thing I realized is everybody has an opinion and generally yeah. it's a different opinion. So the intent of doing this today in a way was let's have one concise hour where each of you guys mm-hmm. through all the experience you've written a book mm-hmm. which I'm going to read but I saw bits of it it looks brilliant and sorry about pulling your leg earlier <laughs> I will make it up to you before the end of it. So maybe what we can do is go in a sequence. Sure. We'll stop from top priority, one each, right, and then we'll go to the second, and okay. then at the end of it, we'll try and arrive at a consensus. Right. We'll nice. make a list of eight to ten things that anybody can do, right, with access to nothing, sure. but following it for one hour a day yeah. and fitting those ten things in yeah. will help everybody. Okay. okay. Before you, ah, before you uh, go there, I uh, just want to go back to you know the, what we were discussing because yeah. yeah. I'm also going to order some food, so I just need to know vegetarian, non-vegetarian. Vegetarian, don't eat after three p.m. So I'm good. My God, Anna. A mixture, veg, uh, non-veg. Yeah, yeah, like just appetizers, anything, no yeah, carbs. Yeah, anything, yeah. Dim sums and sushi kind of thing. You like dim sums? Yeah. Yeah. No, so I, you know, this uh, thing about fitness, drinking, sleep. You know, I observed a pattern a while back. You know, say my work kind of last fifteen years, lot of travel. There was time was lot of drinking, lack of sleep, and fitness. Eventually, I arrived at you know what I call is formula for guaranteed way to fall sick. The you know formula is you go out for dinner, have a few drinks, sleep late, get up early, go to gym, just you know crank it out, run for you know hard five miles or do body weight, and then take a flight. Guaranteed in twenty four hours you'll be sick. <laughs> After like ten years of doing that, I realized in every time that happens, you know I fall sick because your immunity just goes for a toss. You are not getting your time body any time to recover. to be able to do all these things are putting a lot of stress in the body whether lack of sleep fitness also you know puts a lot of stress in the body you just need to time to recover so i think these things in you know, combination can be terrible especially if they become part of lifestyle so maybe coming back to your uh, prompt i think for me number one thing is sleep if i have to do only one thing for fit general health i'll optimize 7 to 8 hours sleep i think for me you know that takes the cake i personally sleep very early i go to bed by 9 and get up around 5 or so Yeah, but I think it doesn't matter. You know, I think as long as you optimize for that seven to eight hours, I think it does wonders to everything else. You can have incredible next sixteen hours where you can push yourself to the hilt, whether it's work or workout or whatever your calling is, right? But I think I mean, this I've arrived at after a long period of time. I mean, I've done all kind of things, you know, good and bad, you know, to experiment with myself. But now I feel both from personal experience, from everything I understand about science of sleep, for me it is it is at the top of the list. Right. Anna? For me I think it's consistency. Mm. I have to do it consistently. I have to put in 5 to 6 days in a week where I do it. It might vary depending on the kind of work that I'm doing, how much and consistency with focus. And focus when it when I talk about fitness and health it's about I don't care about equipment, I don't care about anything. I care about what muscle am i training how much time am i going to give give it for it to recover so would you so say consistency in working out every day working out every day do you work out 7 days a week 6 days a week following a routine if i miss 
a day during the week, I will not cheat on my Sunday. For me, Sunday means give everything up. Don't do anything. I'm probably the laziest. I won't even pick up a glass. I'd expect uh, my children, my wife to feed me and do everything. But that's how lazy I'm on a Sunday. But it works brilliantly because it helps me recoup. For each individual, it's different. What works for me might not work for you. You know, and that's why you go on, on, on the net and suddenly you have five million people giving you gyan at the age of 20. It's very easy to do that. Mm. But I'd like to see that journey, uh, you know, till the end of the day, till till nobody supporting you when you when 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 you need it uh, uh, most. You should need support. You know, why is 70 or 60 a number where they say senior citizen? What do you mean by that when it comes to health? Is is, is that that's why consistency? Right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, top of the list. Top of the list. Yeah. I think it's food for sure. And even for sleep, what I've realized is my sleep quality is based on what I'm consuming. Mm. So if I had to really put something right on top, right. it's food. But what I've realized is my food choices are based on my workout choices. So, you know, if I'm not done workout first thing in the morning, I tend to end up picking up bad food, which in turn ends up messing up my sleep. So it's kind of interconnected. So Absolutely. If, but if I had to put right on top, it would be food. But unfortunately, I can't, you know, I'm not disciplined enough to constantly keep making the right food choices unless I have like a hack in terms of getting a workout first thing in the well, morning. Even if you're not making the choice, if your endeavor is to put that on top, you can say. Right. Yeah. So yeah, so it's, it's food. Uh, food, yeah. Okay. I think for me, it's sleep. I struggle to fall asleep and I start work early in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I have to work out at night. I typically go to the gym at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m which in turn is a cycle which will make it harder for me to sleep the next night. And I think I've not been sleeping enough for a long, long time. And if I could figure out a way to get eight hours of, you know, deep sleep, REM sleep, all right. of that, I would put that number one on my list. Okay, next, number two. Yeah, I think since you are the youngest among all of us, I think you can probably get away with that mm. in your 30s, yeah. maybe in your 40s. At some point, I think it starts to catch up. So that's probably you can think through. I think you have plenty of time on your mm -hmm. side, fortunately. Yeah, but I'm trying. It just doesn't fit into my, like, my entire schedule. If I have to, like, work out in the evening, I prefer to go to the gym when there's nobody in the gym. And if I end up going at 6 p.m., there will be people. But I have to go beyond 8.30 p.m., 9 p.m. There's a bunch of tweaks which I have to do, which I don't know if... The pros be the guns. I mean, the crazy bit is, you know, uh, like he trades the market, right? Uh, there is this whole news around stock markets being extended till 11.30. Mm. You know, <laughs> if that were to happen, you know, guess what's going to happen to you, Steve? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> since the day I started trading, I'm yeah. talking like 17, 18 years. Right. I think I was sick once, sick enough not to trade. And I was in the hospital for 10 days or something. I'm talking... What was that, 12, 13 years ago? Some, yeah. Something like that. 12, 13 years ago, right. I had a liver problem. I was in the hospital for yeah. a fortnight, maybe. Right. But outside of that, I've not missed a single day trading. So I've not had a single day off in pretty much 18 years outside of that. Mm -hmm. So it's more than a job for me. It is also an addiction. Right. It's also a way of life where... <clears throat> My life is dictated less by my timings, but more by the timings mm -hmm. right. of financial events happening in stock markets. Yeah, and I think, you know, having that deep passion for something is equally or even more important, right? You know, we all need good health mm -hmm. so that we can pursue our dreams, our passion, right? So that's, you know, very, very important. You know, health ultimately has to service, you know, yeah. some end. I, I think that line between passion and addiction is very thin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm flirting with either side. I need to like come to terms with which flight, which side I'm flirting with. Right. But we can move on. Right. Number two. Number two for me is, I would just say general movement. And movement throughout the day. You know, mm. it just, we don't need to sit, you know. Mm. I mean, I work out in the morning, but I think last few years I've adopted this habit and started in pandemic. I just stand in the meeting. So in the conference room, there are 10 of us and I'll be sitting in that corner. And while I'm sitting, you know, I don't think camera I can demonstrate, but you know, I will keep, I'll stretch my leg, I'll do this, I'll do this, you know, just, I call it an all day movement. For me, and 
even people who don't work out, there are plenty of opportunities, you know, just go out for a small stroll in the sun, you know, stand for some time. During pandemic, and I had this, you know, treadmill with the iPad on top, and I'm walking on the treadmill and doing Zoom calls with the people, and before you know it, you're getting, you know, 15, 20,000 steps. So any kind of movement, I think our bodies are designed to move. Just being, you know, sedentary, especially in an office job, sitting on a chair all day, I think it's terrible. I mean, the body is not designed, you know, for that kind of function. Can I ask you another question? Yeah. Like, the two of us are largely one-trick ponies. Uh, I have been trading all my life. He's been in the finance side business all his life. We've been doing similar things. You've had a much more eclectic, esoteric life in a way. You did e-commerce and then suddenly switched to health. Yeah. And then before that, you were in the US trying to build a startup. Right. I think that is incredibly more impressive because if you were to tell me today, do something else which is new altogether, it would scare me. And I'm guessing it would scare you too. What were the trigger points which made you move from the valley to Mintra, which was again a really large company, to the whole fitness journey and now the food and everything else? See, I'm glad you see it that way. I think everything has you know, two sides of coin. I definitely will not call you guys one trick pony. I think you know, your own business has evolved dramatically mm. and I have some ringside view because as I invested in grow, you know, I've seen this industry evolve last few years. So I think, you know, your own business and the product has evolved. I think you know, almost in every business goes through reinvention. And I think you've want to build a cathedral, you know, it takes 20, 30, 40 years, right? So I have probably way more respect for that versus doing something, you know, every five to seven years. My journey ended up being that because of variety, all of it is not planned. It's not like, you know, I had a game plan in mind and I started and planned out that way, right? I mean, things happen. I think uh, I had a healthy risk appetite. I mean, so did you guys, I guess, you know, early on. At some point, you know, I, when I started to feel very comfortable, I started to get jittery. I think call it, you know, looking for an adventure or wanting to learn something new. And I start to almost, you know, fortunately it's not as bad as in looking for next shiny thing. But I get a huge kick out of, you know, trying to do something new from scratch. But, you know, I've been, you know, been a startup guy all my life. You know, I worked for four startups in Silicon Valley. Then I was part of Mintra journey, CureFit journey. I worked closely with the two startups the last five years, first Grow and the Skyroot, which are, you know, they're building rockets. They're a first successful launch last year. Mm -hmm. So kind of understand startup world. And uh, I think I keep feeling that tug and I'm now thinking how can I do more of that? You know, what are the other companies that I can build or co-build with somebody else? And what could be the method to still do it systematically where you, you know, build a strong foundation, you design it for the long term, but uh, what is the right method to that? I'm exploring hopefully in, you know, few months or, or end of this year, I'll have better clarity on that. Okay. Anna? I think for me, uh, after consistency is probably food. You know, food plays a very, very Can you just tell us like your diet? Because this is some this is a mystery we all need to kind of solve together. You know, for me it it it's the quantifying of the food. Normally for me at home, it's a it's it's a four egg uh, egg white because I don't like the yellow. Do you do you care for things like allergy tests and not eat of what you're allergic to? Of course I do. Okay. Because uh, like Mugesh said, how he realized what works for him doesn't work for me, you know. Uh, my gut was an issue in the sense I used to get headaches. By the end of the evening, I realized I used to get light headaches. And that was because of the gut issue. And I realized that the gut was the cause of all the problems there was. There was something that wasn't suiting me. And over a period of time, I learned, you know, as as things improved here and we started getting better allergy tests and more precise and accurate, I realized that gluten is something that never worked for me. Probably because I came from a background that, that spoke about rice more than wheat, you know, and uh, I had to go back to my roots. And, and that, that brought about a big change. Uh, dairy, dairy doesn't suit me too much. Uh, more so when uh, when when you talk about uh, the casein and uh, uh, you know other things in in, in the product. So, it, like uh, gluten, uh, dairy products was uh, were a problem because lactose was the problem. So when I switched to uh, lactose free milk, it worked for me in small quantities. So for me, food is is probably three or four eggs in the morning, uh, typical. Uh, gluten-free toast or bread that that I have again it's quantified every mm -hmm. I quantify my food mm -hmm. I make sure uh, 
what my activity for the week is and then accordingly uh, play with, with, with the quantity. And how much protein do you take as a factor to your weight? Uh, see, I, I go into the gram factor uh, right now. Uh, it, it could be probably four eggs in the morning, maybe 150 to 200 grams depending on fish or, or, or chicken that I eat and another 150 to 200 grams in the evening you know, back into the right kind of fats. And, and even if I talk about grams in, 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 in greens, it's probably 200 and 200. So you're looking at 1,600, 1,700 calories or, or going up to 1,900 when I need to load it with carbs. You know, so I load it more with rice because rice suits me very well. Right. Then for me, the quantity of so, uh, salt that goes into it or the quantity of sugar that I consume through the day. Do you probably, consume sugar at all? Yes, I do, because I don't believe in anything else. I don't believe in the substitute for sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's either my fruit or my sugar. I like a cup of tea because it gives me the right, you know, it makes me feel mm -hmm. good. Uh, one cup in the morning and one cup in the evening. But I, once again, it's probably five to six grams of sugar. It's like no sugar at all, but still gets, get, gets me going. And what I like to do, I continue to do because it works for me. Quantity of salt, it's never... Uh, uh, salt in the food, I'd rather have it sprinkled on top. You know, no pink salt for me, regular salt for me mm -hmm. is, is, is what suits me. So this is how I break it up. And uh, I work with a nutritionist. I work with him because I, I want to understand it better. That's not something I have mastered it, but being able to keep weight in check, being able to keep the inch in check, to be able to keep the muscle in check is what, why I, I sit and consult and discuss with them week on week, you know. And, and, and if there is a particular craving, then I ask for that, you know. I li love my fruit. I love my dessert. And if you tell me no dessert after food, mm. I'd go crazy. So, but then I've learned my blend of, of uh, lactose-free But, but your portions are really small, I yeah, guess. Yeah, my pro portions are controlled. Uh, I'd have fruit of the season mixed with, uh, with yogurt and, and, and created in such a way that when frozen, it, ta it, it tastes like frozen yogurt or, uh, or ice cream and my job is done. So my craving doesn't uh, uh, come in. And then generally seven o'clock, I finish dinner uh, and make sure my gut is, gut is right because then I need, like he says, you know, he needs to walk after he's eaten or mm -hmm. he's had a drink. I feel I need, I need to be active after dinner. Could be for half an hour, but I'd walk around. I'd stand, like Mukesh says, I'll always walk up the stairs. I'd, I'd try and avoid the lift when it comes to work. On the set, I'm, I'm walking. You'll rarely see me sit, you know? And it's helped me. I don't know how much it's helping me, but to date, it's helped me a hell of a lot. It's helped me uh, stay fit. And, uh, you know, my off and on pranayams, even if it's thrice a week or, or four times a week, even if it's in the evening, I do my half an hour breathing that, that keeps me light in the head. So it's uh, gym plus pranayama three, four times a week. Okay. Can I ask you another question? Your idea to send, your idea to nudge the kids to be actors? No, not at all. Uh, their decision. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, we'd gone to Atlanta to Emory uh, for Thea and she saw the college, everything done, loved it, got admission. On our way back, she tells me at the airport, you know, Baba, I'm not really happy doing uh, this. I said, what do you want to do? She mm. says, I want to be in the, in the business of films and entertainment. Mm. And I said, are you sure about it? And she says, yes. I said, you know what, it's a lovely place. But baby, will you be able to accept failure? is something that you need to be ready about mm. because that's very stressful. That Friday kills me every time. If I have a bad gut, it's that Friday that gives me the bad yeah. gut, not my food. <laughs> you know, it's I, I, the anxiety that, uh, that kills me and nothing else because the world is judging me. I've worked a year for, to create something with a team and somebody sits there in the first 10 minutes and says, you know, bullshit. And that's what goes viral <laughs> and that's what works because that's what people would like to, to spread. So that's the only thing I tell the kids. If you're ready to take failure and you don't look at it as failure, you look at it as a learning mm. or you say, you know what, I tried something, I failed, uh, take it up. Because you, if you fail, nobody let you go. The media will pounce on you, people will pounce on you because the world is looking at you. 
you know, you fail in business, you try something else, you try something else, uh, but uh, not here. So that's the only thing. Yeah, I think that's the thing I was alleviating to earlier. Mm -hmm. Like in business, in a job, we guys kind of like have some kind of a say in the result, right? right? Like uh, here there's no science. The reason yeah. why something works mm. and something right. does not, nobody knows. Right. And unlike a company being judged, mm -hmm. I think an individual being judged right. is a lot more personal. Right. And yeah. I think people have made a habit through anonymity mm. of being nasty for no reason. Right. I think uh, nine out of 10 times given a choice, people like to say mean things right. for some psychological benefit. And it's which is tough. It's tough when you're walking with family and somebody says, yeah, it's an initiative. Oh, his first uh, last film was mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It hurts. You know, it takes a hell of a lot right. to be, a, be that actor and say, mm -hmm. no, yeah, mm -hmm. you know what? I love this profession and I want to be there. But, you know, and it impacts everybody. It impacts the, right. the children. I, I made sure that I didn't send my kids to, to an Indian Indian school, but it was headed by an American board and, and it had a faculty that was American is because I didn't want anybody to treat them either specially, either special, a celebrity kid, or, or pan them for uh, whose, whose children they are. I said, you know, let them go into a world that doesn't care right. uh, who they are. And uh, somewhere down the line, I feel that worked for me. It was a decision I took years ago. Mm -hmm. And I still remember dad saying, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I said, dad, you're the one who always said that Buddhi Shastra is the only thing that survives, yeah. So yeah. it's a call that you have to take. I have to work hard for it, I know. But I think I'll manage, I'll, you know, I'll have children who'll be far more respectful mm -hmm. when it comes to the world then, mm -hmm. uh, other than that. And, you know, I've realized that everybody says, filmy kids, filmy kids. Mm -hmm. But I think they are more conscious. No, the little bit that I know your kids, they're yeah. some of the most well-behaved yeah. people I've met. I should not even be calling them kids, but yeah. <laughs> they are some of the most well-behaved yeah. people I know. Okay. Yeah. No, but but I think Bollywood is. All, I think the biggest challenge being an actor in my, you know, like is an extension to what you just spoke is actually being constantly being judged. Yeah, mm. I think that's because otherwise, a movie, an actor being successful is very similar to a business, right? As in, there is no science about building a business, right? No, the the differentiation is once you've built a business and you've been successful once, right. you don't start all over again. Yes. Right. yes. As an actor, you start all over again. People only remember your last movie. Last one. Mm. Constantly being judged is a problem. Like, you know, so I'm sure all of us, you know, when we go to these small little startup events, right, we are rock stars there. Yeah. But I, I can, no, like, but it gets annoying in like 15 minutes, right? And I, I constantly, every time I think about it, I think like, how do Bollywood stars manage it? Like, you know, like, because you are, you know, you're exposed you, you, to that 20. You're supposed to manage it. You, you have to manage it. You know, whether you're on flight and suddenly you see your picture somewhere and... Was my mouth open when I was sleeping? But who took this picture? Who took this picture? That's the question. They've done it. You know, you've had people... You, you're sleeping on flight and you've somebody taking a selfie and you're fast asleep. What do you do here? What do you do? I mean, that's the price you have to pay. You know, that's why a lot of times when people uh, people tell me, I love traveling within the country because I, I, I actually believe I enjoy myself the most. But the only thing sometimes you think twice is, Every 10 minutes they expect right. you to say, yeah. Ekito picture. Hai. <laughs> it, 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 it's tiring. It's tiring. You need to be very, 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 very patient. And yeah, that's the only thing I've always told the kids ki, if you can handle that, best profession to be. Where do you get so much love here? Yeah. Right. You know, you you're. you're your your face, your heart is it's a it's a passport that opens any door. Yeah. Mm, <laughs> right. You know, mm. privileges are also there. Yeah, you know, especially but in a country like India, where almost one fifty crore Indians are following Bollywood. You know, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to change my life in such a manner where uh, now I'm waking up in the morning and sitting in the sun and reading a book for half right. an hour because <laughs> this is a novelty to me, right? I didn't know what getting light into your eyes every morning does right. for your circadian rhythm. I right. still don't get it. 
but I'm trying it. Right. I don't know if yeah. it works yet. Mm. But if you guys have tried it for longer, yeah. I mean, I've experimented so, with every single thing. So I want things like yeah. that. Get yeah. light in the morning for 20 minutes. Yeah. No, no, I think eat I th this yeah. food to increase testosterone. But, sleep for eight hours. I want ten things like that. Got it. Okay. So, so my first was get work out first thing in the morning. Uh, food. Um, and third thing is, I think it health can't be looked at as a 80, 90 minute allocation right. per day. I think it's a, it's a, it's a 24 know, seven. But, but what I'm saying is, my third thing would be what Mukesh said earlier, constantly move through the day. Like I have set on my, you know, on my watch, like a timer for every hour, it buzzes, so I get up and I do something. Do you still need to do that if you're working out for one hour a day? Yeah. I think you absolutely should. I think it just Because you know, like you know, I had like really bad shoulder problem. You know, the, when COVID first hit, right? And sitting, I mean, you are having this problem, right? Yeah. In, you know, so because you're constantly looking at the monitor, you're just typing, you know, and I have this habit of kind of leaning towards my left. My entire left shoulder, you know, for like and then the only fix I did was that every one hour get up and otherwise, you know, you'll be in this posture for two, three hours. You will not even feel the stress you're putting on your body. Right, I do so. that. My back is screwed. So every month I go to a chiropractor, but I have like cupping, needling, right. physiotherapy, all of that. Because by virtue of sitting like this mm. pretty much all my life, right. the doctor says this part of my neck is extended and right. this part is contracted. Yeah. So mm. what do they call those exercises where you activate this? I can't remember the word, but I need to go to the gym mm. and do this right. and then move my hand back, right. lying down, stuff yeah. like that. But yeah, you so know, that is a very hard thing to do. Like the chiropractor will tell me, get up every one hour and take a break. But if you're doing something no, and you're engrossed. But today you have, you know, you have technology to leverage on, right? As in, you can set a, you know, like there are apps today where you can set an alarm to buzz every one hour. I, I mean, and, and no, it becomes, I think for me, it's become second nature. I think it takes a while to get used to it. So you get up every one hour and yeah. then stretch. No, just stretch, just walk around. Like do something, you know, like do, especially, I mean, I don't think it's a big problem in Bollywood because I don't know if you're getting to sit for long hours, right? I think you're probably always yeah, constant. Yeah, yeah, always, always active. Yeah. You're always active. I think it's more a corporate world problem, right? Yeah. I think, yeah. and uh, so I think it's, it's important to do that because otherwise what happens is one, you know, you're always one injury away from everything else going bad. Like, you know, like a shoulder pain means I'll probably may not work out the next day, you know, because I'm in pain. Right, so, so yeah, I think I think constant, constantly keep doing something and constantly moving. I think the best thing I've done in my life is wearing an activity tracker. Right, you know, I've set, I set a, I mean, activity tracking goal for the day. So which means at the end of the day, I, I should have moved this much, mm. right? And uh, and yeah, so I, I try to do that consistently. And I think from the time I started doing it, it's it's helping me quite a bit. Okay, my next thing is. What does one do about testosterone? I think mm -hmm. this is a modern day man problem where uh, testosterone levels are low, cortisol is high, and because of that, it becomes significantly harder to put on muscle mm -hmm. and also sleep. So just as a right. thought, in my research online, people are talking about things like L-arginine, that, uh, that Ali, that Thionkat Ali, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonkart. <laughs> stuff like that. These are not jabbing testosterone into your body, right. but these are natural herbs which could increase the odds of your body throwing out testosterone or developing testosterone. What do you think about supplements like this? Do you think this is such a big problem that most people need to supplement for this? Also, like none of us are doctors. This is not medical advice, <laughs> like full disclosure, like <laughs> always, like go consult your doctor. Yeah. But what do you think of testosterone as a problem? And what are the solutions you guys have tried? What has worked? What has not? I mean, so what you spoke about are adaptogens, right? So your ashwagandha, ginseng, tongatali, fudoshia, agrestis. Have uh, you tried them? Yeah, I've, I've, I've experimented with every single one of them. And uh, has the number gone up? No, it hasn't. No? No, it hasn't. Not at all? No. So we both, funny story, but we both went to a doctor and did like a full body checkup. Right. And like small kids, we put both our reports next to each other and we compared <laughs> each metric. <laughs> okay, so we were both quite bad, but I was significantly worse, 
even yeah. though i'm younger and all that mm. my testosterone mm. is lower my cortisol is higher so these people talk about it like this stuff really works no it does i think it's it's very i think it will like every human's different see the thing about this adaptogens yeah. is like it reacts so, differently with everyone to every individual yeah, so it's I mean, like supplements yeah it is supplements you might be able to absorb it and somebody else might not no, be able like to if, absorb it no like if i have a coffee yeah. in the evening i cannot sleep in the right. night like my wife right. she can do espresso shots and <laughs> sleep in like 10 minutes right as in how is it even possible right? as in so uh, it's a uh, yeah so it's but but i have experimented just to uh, and then i've seen my test scores to see if it's kind of help uh what all did you try and how much did you try uh i mean like 2 to 3 months you know like cycle so you know thongra dali for 2 to 3 months yeah. let's say 500 mg a day uh i mean i can't remember uh-huh. I, i mean ashwagandha for 2 to 3 months yeah ashwagandha i've tried i mean in cycles you know in different times and nothing changed so the thing is once my sleep improved Mm. everything it, you know the scores went up now do i give credit to one of these things or do how i how much are you sleeping now i'm i'm getting 7 to 8 hours sleep <coughs> every day yeah i mean there are days of course you know when you miss it but uh, uh, but on 90% of the days i get 7 to 8 hours sleep anna do you have fish oil i do everybody talks about fish oil like it's a no brainer why is that would you like to answer ah uh. I think you should answer. I'm not recalling exactly. I think mm-hmm. got, yeah. anyone, whoever. I mean, wants. everybody says overall health, overall health, and uh. overall health, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you do it, you know. But uh, yeah. for me, see, I I also take the the breaks because I don't take uh, anything. But it's like magnesium helps you sleep, so you know you take it uh, uh, because it, it helps there. And whether it's fish oil or calcium and bones and movements and uh, that's what you read and that's what you uh, you follow. But I think fish oil we can all say is okay. Yeah, I think it's something that yeah. everybody should take. Especially for vegetarians, I think there are all these you know different fatty acids. I think fish oil is supposed to have DHA and EPA. I'm getting it right. Yeah. And for vegetarian people, there is no other source of getting those essential fatty acids. So there's one source, but exactly what it does, you know, I'm not sure. I've been taking or for one of those things that you know you come across, you experiment, <laughs> you sort of feel good. Yeah. Because part of your lifestyle. But this is one true. thing that we all four are doing. Right. It's okay. not, right. Fish oil. Yeah. And it seems to be working. No, I think. Way. I think if if you were to look at supplements, I think the way I th- I think of it is every time someone suggests. My research is more like, can it do any harm if you right. do it? Yeah, yeah. If that's it doesn't do any harm, I'm like, okay, yeah, but that's no, true. it's a check mark. You know, let's do it in. You know, uh, uh, I think any discount supplements, and I think uh, Sunil, you mentioned earlier. I think one has to continuously measure yourself. Yeah. You know, taking supplements and not measuring. You know, and it's quite involved. You know, expensive. You know, you have to. But there are hundreds of blood markers and many other tests. because you put something in your body and you don't know what it is affecting how it is affecting for better or worse that is one consideration second is you know at some point you can so depend on that see all the things we have you know body has the ability to control cortisol and the ability to you know produce testosterone so if you are managing with supplements for how long i think one needs to also think about how do i manage that thing through natural means as well so that at best it's just a crutch i'm using for some time to fix something or not something i'm adopting for a rest of my life unless there's something absolutely harmless you know there's not going to cause, cause any harm it's a kind of insurance policy a lot of a lot of multivitamin is that insurance policy right but i think it's a it's not something that we can advise that take this supplement everything will fine for you i don't think you know i mean like supplement no, no, says not right? take this supplement but more like what are we taking right yeah. no but supplement as a word says is a supplement right as in it cannot replace right. anything that's i right. mean you we still have to get a balanced diet yeah but uh, but yeah, that's how i think of supplement so if i'm having So if I were to say my routine of supplements, yeah, there are multivitamins. There is omega, there is whey. I mean, I love you know. After every workout, I look forward for my, you know, my whey, whey protein. Right. Now, do you have whey? <laughs> no, I I did try it for a bit, but it doesn't work for me. There's a lot of bloating, probably because of uh, my lactose, lactose issues. Right. And even though they say there's none, uh, <laughs> you know, it 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 doesn't work for me. So I try to. Supplement it with my my food, right. and and no other way. And it works for me because the quality of muscle uh, is is maintained, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I think one of the things about quality of muscle, right? What I've realized is, the younger you start, 
like you know this whole trying to get muscle on your body once you're in your 30s and 40s is so much more harder haven't we been trying for like 20 years each no no i mean since consistently you know Consistent. other day yeah, yeah other day i met the doctor mm. and he the said no no uh, another doctor mm. you know so i like i'd gone to a sports doctor because from a joints and etc so i he asked me how long you've been working out I said uh, for 20 plus years but consistently over the last 2 to 3 years. So he said no no do forget the 20 years tell me consistently all that matters is that 2 years of consistent work. Uh because you know as kids I think you know when you work out you you know you put on muscle that stays on you for longer right even when you grow muscle, old muscle memory you yeah. know and uh, that's the advantage probably I've had as as to going forward the next generation might not have might have is the freehand stuff that we did because right. there were the equipment was not there yeah. there were basic dumbbells i grew up on a pull up bar what what Pro- age did you start working on who oh, i started martial arts when i was 12 and 13 and uh, you know i wanted to play cricket and i wanted to get stronger i met vivian richards and he says you know you need to do weights but i was very conscious of the fact that when they said overhead weights means you won't grow gymnastics right. means you won't grow right. you know and that stayed with me and so i took up uh, they said i took up the body weight so i did a lot of pull ups mm-hmm. and uh, everything for me was the monkey bar everything for me was the monkey bar in school and uh, even when i started hitting the gym which was a very small gym probably 200 square feet and i had one little machine there but i had a beautiful pull up bar and i still remember doing 200 to 300 uh pull ups every <laughs> session that's crazy you know so i do something then i'd want for my rest was sets? it could be uh, 50 sets 100 sets that But didn't matter mm-hmm. But i just counted the number of pull ups because I, it looked good felt good i can do maybe you know? like 10 each for three sets yeah but that is damn good i mean today kids don't do that mm. uh but calisthenics and all other formats have come where you know keeping the gym aside getting into those physical activities will probably help build that muscle memory you know and that's so, why the surya yeah. namaskar will always be something that is magical right. when it comes to overall body and fitness so one of the things i have been listening on quite a bit is this peter atia right as in and so he you know i think i started listening to him last year and he spoke about the dead hang mm-hmm. you know which yeah, is you yeah. hang on a yeah. bar and you you know so how long can you do now I can do two minutes, ten seconds. You know, so his he says the ideal strength for you is is if you can do a dead hang for like two minutes, like you know, and uh, and he's got he you know there are a few interesting concepts that I've completely sold the way he says it. One is around this whole like a back casting as he calls it, which is you know think of how you want to live your life the last ten years of your life. Like you know if if you're if you want to live between eighty to ninety, what is the quality of life you want to live? and if if you want to be able to say you know say i want to be able to trek when i am 90 years old and if i want to be able to trek when i am 90 years old today i need to make lifestyle changes today I, because strength and vo2 max keeps deteriorating every 10 years right so i need to ensure i am able to i'm at least at this amount of strength today so that when i am 80 90 years old even when the deterioration with age happens i'm at a certain level to be able to do that activity right so So yeah so I think I think uh, even for you know one of the things the more I researched about dead hang I realized that so I I also have a problem of my spine being a little curved mm. so what happens is there's a muscle imbalance you know so you know every time I put on muscle so because of this uh, curved spine then when I was researching on dead hang I realized that it's actually so good for your spine mm. you know so it's uh, I should have ideally done this So you do it every day No, every day is too much because you're you know you tire your forearms and your wrists so every end of the workout once in 3 days types you know end so. of the work yeah so what what about sauna and cold plunges and cryotherapy i am personally a big fan for both i think both heat therapy and cold therapy of any kind you were speaking to us the last time you came here and you were saying you have a cryo machine you have i have a yeah this tub which i you know keeps the water at about you know temperature you preset i generally keep it around 10 degrees and once or twice a week you know i will do Three, four set of one minute each, but that's you know yeah that's that's cold therapy. I think overall, I think both cold and heat, as I understand, they work in a different manner. But most of it boils down to you know this whole idea of controlled stress. 
-hmm. And when you put your body into a managed control stress situation, then body reacts to that. Body reacts to cold in certain way, body reacts to you know heat in certain way. And I don't ask me about the actual mechanism, how and why it works, but generally helps tremendously with recovery mm -hmm. and also boosts immunity, presuming, assuming you're doing everything else also, which are more fundamental in this. But yeah, I've been doing, you know, cold yeah. treatment no, it and works. heat for long. Do you heat do works. it? Uh, so now cold plunge? Cold plunge, uh, I, I don't do the cold plunge. Of course, uh, when I bathe, it's, it's always cold water wherever I am and it works brilliantly for me. Uh, like he says, de-stressing, whether it's stress, whether it's, whether it's uh, you know, body pain and, uh, and injury and recovery, it works. When you talk about heat, it's about the toxi uh, toxicity, you know, getting, getting it out of your yeah. body, yeah. getting the toxins out. And, and that's why it works, because of the kind of food that we are consuming, uh, one, one needs to. And, uh, and cold has always worked, you know, even if you talk about injury and, and the rush of blood and, 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 and recovery, it, it, it always works. This, this does work and that's why they say you should always also sweat when you, when you train, you know, whether, whether, you're, whether you're in the gym or you're outside, uh, sweating always helps, whether yeah. it's body or the overall uh, feeling. Yeah. So a lot of people are talking about the importance of good fat mm. and they're talking about an all meat, less carb diet mm -hmm. or all meat, some vegetables and less carb diet. Have any of you guys tried it? You obviously not, but I um, actually have. So I have an interesting but you story. Said you're to vegetarian. Tell. I am now vegetarian. Huh. I was also vegetarian when I grew up. Huh. But so in my 20s, you know, I got into this bodybuilding. This was in 2000, you know, early 2000s. And at that time, the whole bodybuilding, you know, concept was eat every three hours and you need to have protein every meal. Mm. And as a vegetarian, you know, beyond a certain point, how much, you know, whey protein and casein also used to be quite popular at that time. But even, you know, um, between my trainer and nutrition, we felt even that is not enough. So I forced myself to eat meat. I tried pretty much everything, you know, couldn't get used to it. Like I just never could not. I, mean, I tried for almost a year, literally forced myself to eat because I thought that, you know, I need to have so much protein, you know, for per, this much protein per body uh, weight and so on. But at some point, you know, I just realized that's not for me. Uh, I continue to take whey protein, etc. But over a period of time, I realized, uh, I think general principle of food are very simple. I think they're, you know, mm. we have made it very complicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very you need true. to consume all three macronutrients. I think fat was, you know, vilified for many decades. And I think that caused a lot of harm, you know, that enabled sugar to become a big part of in people's life. But these days, I think what the science is and what I also believe is as much as 20, 25%, 30% of, you know, calories in your food can come from fat, almost fat. any fat, you know, True. any combination of, you know, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, So if you're vegetarian, saturated. what is that fat? Ghee, coconut oil, olive oil, all kind of nuts, uh, avocado, yeah. the, you mm. know, plenty of choices. So that, you know, healthy amount of protein for sure. And by and large complex carbs, you know, as long as, I think carbs, you need carbs also. I, I'm definitely not a proponent of going out of your way to avoid carbs. You need to control it. Carbs should not be 80% of the calories, but can easily be, you know, 30, 40% of calories. And I think that's absolutely fine. I think it's about staying, you want to stay lean, you want to bulk up, it's about muscle. Then the balance of carb might shift a little bit, uh, right. you know, more than protein. But if you want to get leaner and you want to lose weight, then, then where, where your protein intake, but like, uh, Mukesh said 20-25% fat is good enough and it could be in the form of avocados or butter or ghee. For, for me also it's ghee. It's always ghee. You don't eat much carbs, right? No, no. I mean the thing is I've come to a conclusion now that um, if anything may, slows me down, I'll do less of it. Like, you know, whatever I'm eating, you know, after eating if I feel shit after a while, you know, so I do less of that. So. Um, but I can't stay without carbs. I mean, if I don't yeah. eat rice, I mean, oh God, I'll... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like in two but days without rice... It would rice, be like one third of how much meat you're consuming. Yeah, I mean, I'm not... I'm not that particular about sizes. I mean, I, I, I know portions now, but... Uh, I try to stop eating before I feel full, which I've realized is a mistake. I mean, we both have done quite a bit in the younger days, which is just keep stuffing yourself. So, I think it's just... Uh, we ate like a lot of bad quality meat as kids yeah you know yeah. bad quality not bad quality I mean, badly just, cooked 
Yeah, I mean like from no, bad places with mm. toxic color and oil <laughs> and stuff like that. Like the kebabs which look so red and yeah, also. Yeah, so younger days you can pretty much <laughs> yeah, get away. Which you buy so. from the street side <laughs> vendor yeah. and you know yeah. stuff like that. I think yeah. going back to your list, right? I think yeah. one of the things we should definitely talk about, and it'll be among my top four or five, is just focus on some kind of meditation. Mm. And by that, I don't necessarily mean you know you have to use an app like you know Headspace or Calm. Is finding a 10-15 minutes in a day to just to center yourself. Mm. For a lot of people, earlier the you know, prayer used to be that time. So that is one way to meditate. It could be just going outside and sitting in the sun. You know, maybe that's just somewhere where you're just focusing on yourself. I think the you know I adopted meditation as a habit about five six years ago, and I think it's one of those things in just 10-15 minutes of investment. The return on that is just incredible. I think you feel a little more calm and centered. You're able to deal with the stress, improves a bit. You are less agitated, you know, when the situation arises. So I think that's probably one thing that most people can consider in some form. There's so many varieties of meditation. One doesn't need to get too technical about it or just follow a particular style. But somewhere, you know, developing that awareness, then you have to find some time during the day, preferably as he says, consist to maintain consistency. Same time of day, it could be, you know, on waking up or evening. But I think, you know, that yeah. definitely. No, I mean, that's why you know, health is not about just eating. Right. about exercising or supplementation. It's about how you're feeling, how you're thinking and what you are saying. You know, when you say, I'm calm at, at work, that calmness comes from, from, from that mental uh, mindset. That's why for me, pranayam works like magic. You know, for me, that is meditation or being able to focus on something, to be able to listen to mm. what Mukesh is saying, or listen to the questions right. you're you're telling me, and being able to hold on to that, so that the good I can use somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, for me that is that is focus, and and that is meditating. If I'm listening to a great script and I'm involved, the rest of the world doesn't matter to me. When that when when worry doesn't come in, mm -hmm. whether it's the health of my own health, family, business, disasters around me, or my flops. If I can listen to you and get excited, mm. I think that is right. that is right. meditation yeah. for me. Right. It's not about good food and not just about uh, uh, exercising. It's about that mental space. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was about to, uh, you know, I would say I would I, I was about to say not meditation. I was about to say hobby, mm. right? You know, having a hobby right. that can keep you occupied because yeah. one of the things I've been doing, you know, like uh, everyone at my house has an issue with it, which is, uh, you know, like for around 20 to 30 minutes um, after my workout, I take my guitar and I sing. Yeah. I sing loud, okay? I mean, like, <laughs> and I find it very meditative. You know, so, and... Uh, my mom, you know, as mom, you know, Loves thinks I'm, I'm an amazing singer. You know, she says I should record. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I do that, and I play sports. You know, so I look forward to playing a sport over the weekend. So uh, it kind of is is you know it falls in the same meditative bucket. Yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely. and uh, so I have an eight-year-old son now. So one of the things I've done which has helped me with my sleep is to actually kill all my devices by, by like one or two hours before sleep. And uh, some of these hobbies. And hobbies also, you know, things that I keep changing. So I find it intellectually challenging to pick up a new hobby, you know. So I was trying to learn the keyboard for a while, like. So yeah, so I mean, I think, I think all of this, I know it, it ends up sounding like it's very complicated to do, but it's not. I mean, I think it's, it's a, uh, like a, I think everyone should have a hobby, you know. Yeah, what about coffee, guys? Like, not will you drink coffee, but what do you think about <laughs> drinking <laughs> coffee? Like, <laughs> coffee? Yeah. But do you want to drink a coffee? No, I can't sleep after that. Anna, so. would you like a coffee? No. I'm good. You guys don't say that much about health, but each time I offer you a fruit juice, coffee, it's, it's like a blatant no. Like no, it's no, I am, I am, I am feeling, you know, like because Sunil is around, you know, I'm like, you know, like whatever I do will be like, you know, so I'm not even no, thinking. See, of I food. think, I think more than anything, right? Like this is about four people coming together and hanging out. Right. Like it does not even have to be about health. If you want to ask him about 
how big his biceps are. Can you measure them with a the tape? You can. And no, no, but but I think I think you know now that he triggered me. As in, did, when did the stylist change? There's you know something about your style which changed, you know, like from your younger days to now. I mean, now you know the the kind of I feel more evolved. I think because uh, fashion has changed so much, yeah? the availability of everything, the awareness of everything, you read, you watch, you see. And then mentally, uh, you know, when I took that break from cinema because crap was coming to me, and then dad fell unwell, and those three, four years with him where nothing in the world mattered. You know, I'd stopped listening to everything around me. And when you start doing that, you realize what your strengths are, mm -hmm. you know. And the biggest high for me was I spent the four most beautiful years of my life with my father when probably he needed me most, you know. Uh, and uh, that was my high. So for me, it was, you know, a lot of kids today don't do that, but I managed to do that. So that was the strength for me. And. Uh, Fortunately, unfortunately, everybody believed that I didn't want to work, so nothing came to me. But the morning he passed away, that night he passed, the morning I got a call for one of the biggest health shows, you know, fitness shows, and, and, and uh, I said, this is calling, this is him saying, you know, get mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. That journey I learned so much from the kids. Right. You know, and, uh, and then I said, let me be me. You know, the the day you're comfortable with yourself right. is, I think, the day you realize that there's so much in you that works. And I said, you know, gray hair, mm -hmm. white hair, black hair, doesn't matter, let's go gray. Because then you say, I have hair. Yeah. You know, when you compare it with the rest <laughs> of the industry, everybody is weaving and everything, everybody is doing stuff. Somewhere I've done something right, right, whether it's the food or whether it is. So let it be. And let me age gracefully because I've passed my prime when it comes to cinema and action and movies. So let me get comfortable in my own skin. So I got comfortable in my own skin and, and I say, I'll play my age. And then everybody saw only the good in you, you know. Right. Oh, oh, young kids coming and saying, you know, <laughs> uh, sir, respect and stuff like that. So that confidence, like I said, when you hear it, things start w getting better. So about Bollywood, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will be curious about this question. Right? As in, while you, your fitness journey is like, you know, you started at 12. But, you know, when you see some of these transformations of actors, right, you know, going from fat to like six packs in three months, six months. While it probably inspires a new generation of people to take up health and fitness, right? I mean, every time an actor has come shown six pack, I think, you know, like, I'm sure cult, you know, subscription goes up, right? But, but aren't you then setting up people with the wrong expectation that, you know, you can somehow go from here to here in three months or six months, etc. So each one has his own journey. Right. But if I talk to my son, I say that's not the way you're going to do it. If you want to get leaner, yeah. there is food that can uh, help you do it. I had said that I'll get my six packs when I'm 60. Mm -hmm. And I did manage that at that time. Pr probably not as defined as uh, this, because I don't do anabolic steroids, I don't take creatine, I don't take fat burners. But I'm still, I still wear a 29 and a 30 from a ready counter when it comes to Mintra and the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> Whichever brand that there is. You don't even need to measure. You can send it to me and I'll wear it. Yeah. That for me is my achievement. So I, it's, I'm very clear with Ahan or with any of the kids that, that come to me asking for help. Food can do it. Habits can do it. Sleep can do it. Being confident about yourself can do it. Right. You know? But... I am who I am, but my attitude will depend on who you are. Got it. You know? but, but what so, do you think about the, the, I mean... It doesn't work for me. Right. No, but, but, but me. do you, like someone should voice this out though, right? Because I, I'm constantly doing that. Right. I'm constantly doing that. That fitness is not as expensive or as difficult as one seems. It's the consistency right. that, that, that one has to do it with. And you can achieve it. Okay, you might not achieve it in two months, but you'll achieve it in, 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 in 12 weeks. Or you'll do it uh, over 16 weeks. There's so many apps that are doing it. And you're seeing the transformations. I think that also, you know, I think brings up a very interesting point. In last four or five years, as I looked more and more into science of health, and also just studied generally what the 
traditional point of view on health is huge convergence. On one hand, you know, you have intermittent fasting, you have calorie restricted diet and all the, you know, evidence based, you know, studies for that. On the other hand, you know, fasting is part of every religious tradition. Uh, yeah. Like there is no, not a single religion in the world with some kind of fasting protocol. You know, it could be once a week, once a month, one month in a year, whatever the you know format is, because people realize that. Similarly, you know, we talk about you know meditation is very popular. We have all these cool apps now, but you know, pranayam, dhyan, you know, has been part of this Ayurvedic tradition for a long period of time. Uh, you know, we talk about you talked about you know, uh, getting sunlight in the morning, surya namaskar. You know, that has always been there, right? lot of stretching, stretching protocols. We talk about gratitude practice now, right? We had prayers, you know, since ancient time. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of, you know, conversion on this modern tools, which is, is great that, you know, there are, people are talking about it, people are talking about that scientific terms. But what makes that even more better is that there is so much, you know, even uh, ancient validation that people have been through trial and error, through, you know, they've arrived at these things, they've followed through, these things survive for thousands of years and nothing survives for that long unless there is, you know, true merit. There mm -hmm. are just few fundamental principles. In fact, you know, in my book, and not to promote the book here, mm -hmm. but I think the, I think most of health advice, you know, boils down to this mm -hmm. phrase I've used. It is, eat less, sleep more, always move. In whichever format you can true. do these three things, 80-90% of your health will be taken care of. But you've gotten a lot fitter than two years ago have to say. You have. Can I flex? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you take off your shirt and flex? Huh? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to talk about one more thing. Yeah. Because you're here, I think we have to use the opportunity to talk about the business of fitness. Mm -hmm. How many people in our country are into fitness? <laughs> and then we're going to come back to this right. conversation and summarize because I really want r tangible, fungible takeaways right. yeah. of what people can incorporate. Yeah. So we'll just summarize all we spoke about once sure. and things that we think people should do. But maybe you can talk about the business. See, I think the answer to that is not enough. You know, we have only 5 million people in the country who go to gym, who pay for any kind of gym membership out of a country of, you know, 1.4 billion people. It, it's a point. 4% penetration compared to about 20% in US, 15% in Europe. So very few people are going to any kind of gym. If you include people who go to park in the for morning walk, run, etc., the number you know grows to about 10, 12 million, so about a crore or so. It's just too small. I think we are a very early in the culture of fitness. You know, people are just waking up to the potential of fitness and also the you know the so-called you know Western lifestyle and what people call sad diet you know standard American diet is catching up with people and a combination of you know sedentary lifestyle poor diet choices is catching up and so people have become aware the number is growing but I think you know I would love to see the day and not only because as a you know somebody who's involved with cult but in general I think physical activity is so important and it was I think part of our culture in many different ways until say probably. 30, 40 years ago, you know, we used to go for morning walks, evening walks. In every small town, you will see people after the meal, they'll go for evening walks, right? Uh, a lot of you know, free yoga classes will happen, you know, every neighborhood. All of that has stopped and this more organized way of fitness has not really taken off in a big way. But hopefully that will change, you know, I think. Um, you know, we need to also talk about the, you know, how fast the lifestyle disease is. Lifestyle diseases are diseases of lifestyle, you know, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, mental health issues, everything is on the rise. While on the fitness gym goes a 5 million, the number for all these diseases are in many tens of millions, you know. You start with 50 million for diabetes, go up to as many as 150 million people who are diabetic or pre-diabetic, right? And all those diseases are, it's not, you know, you are genetically, you have to get those. It's because people are getting accustomed to poor uh, lifestyle choices. A lot of people just don't know what is the right thing to do. The awareness is very low. Bad habits get formed. Sometimes bad habits are promoted within the household. We have seen, you know, all these high sugar, so-called, you know, the health drinks, you know, that, you know, oh, yeah. parents, you know, give to their young kids and you get used to that, right? And only mm -hmm. now people are realizing how much, how high the sugar content. Like that case which is going on. Yeah, right? recently, I mean, that's, you know, it's great that awareness is building up. Legs, but, you know, vita boost. Yeah, violent. absolutely. You know, these and I mean, growing up, we all thought yeah, they were yeah, health yeah. drinks, right? You know, uh, Maggie, you know, another example, right? You know, it was, you know, uh, wheat Maggie. 
yeah, wheat Maggie, which is probably, I don't know, 1%, you know, wheat or something like that, right? It's a, I think the, the point is, you know, we have gone from a uh, lifestyle of abundance. You know, a lot of fast food has come in, a uh, lot of packaged food has come in, which was growing up. I don't remember, you know, having access to a lot of packaged food and everything was, you know, locally grown, homemade, fresh, which is, you know, very cool now, but was in extra available to everybody just, you know, a few decades ago. So I think this gap between the tremendous rise in lifestyle diseases and not enough culture of, you know, active lifestyle is a problem for the country. And I hope in coming decades in that changes. Right. Yeah. And this is something that you know, like has Green been. matter health also is there. Yeah. Right? So, so yeah, there's been like a passion project, you know, right. for the last two three years. Uh, so uh, run this thing called as Rain Matter Health. You know, so we've been partnering startups, working in the space, who's trying to make it easier for Indians to make healthier choices, right? Uh, so I've thought about it quite a bit over yeah. the last two three years, and I've come to a conclusion that I think the only way to get that five million number to go up is, I don't know if people will, I mean, you need to, people will go for fitness reasons. You know, I mean, I, I think it has to be sport reason. No. I think, you know, sport has to be promoted in this country, right. you know, outside just cricket, right? As in, uh, I think if you look at the US, I think one of the big reasons why so many people go to the gyms is because this college scholarships, right. you know, that, you know, ha having a sports background that helps you get into a good college is a good, you know, is a reason, right? So. I think something like that has to happen in India, isn't you know there has to be like this culture of playing sports that starts very early. Because yeah. if you're playing a sport, automatically you'll do everything else. Right, right? As in, uh, basically, what you're saying is bang on. You know, extracurricular activity has to go out, right. and it's to it has to be a part of the curriculum. Right. It has to be. You have to be graded for that and you have to get scores for that. And those scores should make a difference. And that's right. the only way it will make that difference. You know, if you really truly want to make a difference in this country in terms of health, I think it's about getting more people to play sports, you know, some physical extracurricular activities. Yeah. I mean, this is something that, you know, internally we were talking at Zeroda saying that maybe we should announce that, you know, in our hiring, we'll have 10% quota for, no, like, you know, because, you know, businesses, yeah. even if you're not, you know, it's very hard you know, if, some businesses, if they come forward and start making these kind of announcements, right. maybe people will think more about, you know, sports. So, yeah. Uh, but what are your vices, by the way, Sunil? What do you <laughs> I mean, like you said, you like desserts. Minute, what what team minute team minute other Any dessert, any Indian sweet would work yeah. like magic for me. But but I still control. I control it a hell of a lot. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Like I mean, you know, if you're having a, I don't know, like. Kaju burfi. Can you stop at one kaju burfi? <laughs> I don't like kaju oh, burfi. Oh, you don't like But it. anything <laughs> else, I won't stop at. Oh, yeah? I can't stop. I can't. Oh, what's your most favorite Indian dessert? Uh, all the laddus. You talk about the darwar peda. When you come to <laughs> Bangalore, that's, that's, that's a killer. Or your Mysore Park or anything. I, I mean, I'm a mithai guy. I'm, I love my mithai. How often do you have mithai? Not often, not often, not often. You know, I only, and for me, like they say, I have to take a vow or a badha and say, I will not eat and that's when it works. Right. But then, if somebody comes with a, a, a puja ka thali and there's, the, the, there's that peda there, I'll go for it first. <laughs> the excuse being ki, no, it's this guy, you know, puja ka hai. By the way, I, you know, I, I I got your stance on you know non-nutritive sweeteners, which is mm -hmm. you know your stevia, monk sugars. What is your stance on it? As in, do you do you are you okay? Because you know if you're gonna get didn't who just come out and say it's bad? WHO. Oh, I mean I think it was misrepresented. You know, so I don't. Yeah, I yeah I think did my WHO come out with it? Yeah, they yeah. came up with uh -huh. a report last week, but you know I think the result wasn't. I think the way media has covered the result isn't you know. Is, but why would they? You think again? It's like lobby, lobby. No, I mean sugar it's not lobby. about no, it's not about sugar lobby. I'm saying, yeah, I mean, the media, the way it is portrayed, it, mm. it seems like it is. Mm. Uh, oh, we're getting healthy snacks, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to stay in yeah, line with <laughs> what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, because this is something that I've been researching quite a bit because I have a, a sweet tooth, and we have ended up investing in a few companies which are, you know, making. Should I say healthier dessert? I don't know if it you know, sounds like an oxymoron, but yeah, you know, so, uh, you know, like a lower calorie dessert to be, you know, more. Um, 
Yeah. So I think so on, yeah. this, on this artificial sweetness, I think the jury is still out. I think some of the you know earlier version of artificial sweetness are definitely out. I sure, think yeah, those some of them are even carcinogenic and so on. Some of these more natural sweetness like uh, monk sugar and stevia, don't know. I think hopefully we'll figure that out in next you know I don't know five to ten years. People are working on it. You can find both kind of stuff online today. But my personal take on it, things like you know occasional fruit. Or, or even you know, putting honey in something every now and then, or having uh, you know some dates and so on, is I think absolutely fine as long as it's every once in a while. Every day consumption of sugar, I think, is just very unnatural. I think evolutionary, yeah. we are just never used to having so much sugar, and that's you know too very much out of sync within how our biology works. Say, say health is so important right. today, right? Yeah. Like if you want to be an entrepreneur, to work at full capacity, you have absolutely. to be healthy. That's right. So we have to condense this information in a manner right. which is easily consumable to anybody who wants to be healthy right. but not necessarily spend a lot of money or time on it. Right. And you guys have to figure out how yeah. to do it. The first starting point is why care about health and fitness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I mean, uh, like I said, I think uh, interesting concept here, I think Sunil is the right you know, like a he a hero for that story is is that, you know, I think it's important to age stronger, yeah. right, as in, because I've seen it my dad as well, right, as in, you know, as he grew... Hey, talk about what dad's getting on. Uh -huh. Sorry. Growth dad? hormone, testosterone. <laughs> no, 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 he's not getting on that yet. So, no, we took our dad, you know, uh, to an endocrinologist. And because he was losing a lot of muscle, you know, he was kind of losing, he's becoming very frail. He's, he's not very old, he's just 70 to 73. And, he had a heart attack. There's nothing illegal about testosterone no, there's or nothing. growth yeah, hormones. Yeah. No, no, so no, 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 he still not started that. I think that's the question to like mm -hmm. preface the conversation right. to be asked at that age. And right. this is not for a 40-year-old man or a 30-year-old man. Yeah. Right, right. So, yeah, so I mean, uh, we took uh, the dad to the endocrinologist. I think uh, one of, some of the things that the endo has spoken about, you know, as you grow older, your hormonal imbalances in your body is, mm -hmm. you know, like a lot of time we don't, you know, we don't care about it. You know, this like speaking about testosterone is a taboo, right? But mm -hmm. men, over a time, as they grow older, their testosterone keeps dropping. You know, which which leads to lower muscle loss, leads to higher stress, and etc. So, uh, so yeah. So I think um, uh, the the endo has started my dad uh, on DHEA supplements, and uh, he started him on thyroid supplements uh, because the thyroid activity, when it you know is is not optimal, you also you know bloat easily, you lose muscles, etc. Um, so yeah, so it'll be interesting, you know, like I've been telling my dad is that if these things, what the endo said is if these things work well, maybe we can, you know, try testosterone, maybe we right. can try uh, growth hormones, etc. So, so the next one, two, three years, I think my dad will be like, a, you know, if he suddenly goes from being frail to doing pull-ups, you know, and, and like, he used <laughs> to be fit when he was younger. He used to work out and all of that. Yeah, he lo used to look yeah. like you know, he used to be uh, like really strong. You know, I mean. Um, but I think another really smart doctor that I know, yeah. uh, he was telling me that once the way we have evolved, right? Like up until a hundred years ago, we only lived till we were forty. Now we live till we are seventy to eighty, mm -hmm. eighty-five. Your body beyond procreation does not want to inherently thrive, right. like hormonally, mm -hmm. right? And for women, it's easy because the markers are more evident because mm -hmm. you go through that menopause right. and you know for a fact hormonally your body is changing. But for men, they often silently suffer because they don't realize what hormones are not mm -hmm. being produced right. in their body. So this doctor, in fact, was recommending as early as 40, mm -hmm. beyond that procreation age, right. typical procreation mm -hmm. age, one needs to start watching hormonal changes, supplement, right. add, change, and it just helps you in the long mm -hmm. run. Like, you know, like the endo, right? Like I take vitamin D3. Right. Like he says almost every Indian yeah. is deficient on vitamin right. D3. You know, it's like, and vitamin D3, is a hormone which right. I didn't know That's about, right. you know, until he explained. You know, it's actually a hormone in the body and not a like a multivitamin because a lot of time people yeah. think vitamin D three is is like a. Uh, so, but but you know, just to go back to this conversation, you know, I think medical progress 
is going to make sure that we all, our life expectancy is going to keep going up. And over the last 20 years, India's life expectancy has gone from like 60 to 70. And it'll probably, by the time the current generation of people are 70 years old, the life expectancy will probably have gone to 80, 90. Right. Uh, so the question then is, what is the quality of life you want to lead in the last 20, 30, 40 years, right? And, and the kind of life you live today is what will determine the quality of life then. Uh, do you want to increase your lifespan or you want to increase your health span, which is, you know, you want to live longer healthily. And this is a conversation, I think, you know, which has to be more mainstream. Right. And, and because today, this whole, I work 20 hours a day, I don't sleep, you know, it gets celebrated. It's, it's a wrong kind Absolutely. of celebration. We, we, you know, I mean... Uh, and most often people are working 20 hours a day, not because their productivity goes up proportionately. I think it's the insecurity of... Right not wanting to look like they're not working 20 hours a day. <laughs> Does that make sense? In no, a very like, weird yeah. way? No, no, you're absolutely right. I think, I think overworking is, is missold. I, I think, you know, because as you grow older, you suddenly realize that, I mean, in 20s and 30s, you can get away with it. Now, I've realized as soon as I got in my 40s, like what worked, you know, like, I can't do that now. You know, right. I mean, I can't, I need to have, your body is evolving and you need to make changes, you know, so, so I think if, if we had to pick up saying, why should people care about health and fitness? I think the easiest way I have found to explain to people within Zero, you know, within our company mm -hmm. has been that, dude, you guys are gonna live, you know, assume that most of you guys will live till 90 years of right. life. You'll probably stop working at 60. Yeah. You have 30 years of your life, right? right? 30 years of li your life, which is like a retirement period, yeah. right? Now, one is, what's is the quality of life you want? And second, what is the health cost? Right. Like you know, of of that thirty years, right? As in, if if you if you if you don't have had a healthy lifestyle, all the saving that you had from now to sixty will probably not be enough for you to take from sixty to ninety. You right. know, for majority of the people, right? As in, um, because you know, people tend to understand when it comes to you know, like as soon as it's money, right? People relate better, right? Yeah. As in, if you can explain to people that if if you can take care of your health better now, means you can lead to a better money outcome. Uh, people tend to then, oh, is it? And you know, mm. the things like that, you know, so... <laughs> Wellness cheaper than illness. <laughs> yeah, that's, right, yeah. <laughs> that's what you'll have to drive yeah. in. But, see, whenever you do that, a combined effort of doing everything together and understanding your body is very, very important. You know, the process of aging and for me to do action, when I do action, I mean, I used to do action blindly even then. But even now, I feel I don't do those many amount of uh, rehearsals when I do it. I watch, I learn, I do everything very so slow because I know my body is slowed down. But the adrenaline kicks in instantly when you hear the word take and action. Yeah. You know, I never believed in massages, but today I believe, no, yeah, that for growth and to continue to grow, I need those little, little That's things. That's something that, we didn't talk about. That, massages that every week? Once in 15 days at least. Like you know, deep tissue massage. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Because growth, recovery, knots, mm. those are the things we never knew about. Mm. When I was training, I never knew what a knot was and mm. why when you open it, what, what happens, mm. you know. And how uh, diets mess you up when it comes to injury. And we all believe that injury is because only because of training or because we've done something wrong, but it's also because of your gut here. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I think you know, massage and also like mobility, like, you know, I've realized that in my yeah, 40s, yeah. like just doing, like I do hot yoga, you know, at least once a week or you know, at least once in fortnight. Um, I've, I've started learning this animal flow, you know, mm. which is like really nice for mobility as right. well. You know, and, uh, and just stretching, you know, like post-workout stretching for like, you know, 10, 15 minutes. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's. Like it's, uh, it's, I think, massages and mo for mobility, you know, stretching and etc. So really yoga good. and the asans right. are the answer for yeah. India. Yeah. For, uh, mobility, yeah. everything is, is a takeoff from there. Yeah. Mm. So it, 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 it's the world, yeah. When you're growing, you don't believe because you don't build those kind of muscles, so you're not attractive enough. Yeah. You know, you feel, feel that, but if done right, I think all the answers are there, not very complicated. And definitely in Indian culture, I think a lot of you know, solutions no are question, available. I think no going question. back to what you were saying, Nitin, is 
what will it take for people to especially in their younger years to take health seriously it's not really top of mind sometimes people get into it because of aesthetic reasons you want to look a certain way and that's probably the biggest trigger for people to consider in their 20s and 30s but that's where you know most of changes can happen you know beyond that the long term impact of that you know building a strong foundation in your 20s 30s and keep nurturing that in your 40s 50s i think it's also not only about increasing your health span from 60 to 90 but even you know people who are not proactive about their health they start to see things start to happen you know in late 30s 40s onwards you know you start to gain weight you start to have pre diabetic symptoms you know somebody will put on a statin for cholesterol management you know you start taking something for managing diabetes and so on and i think that you know your you start to have uh, you know blood pressure issues you start to feel a little foggy in the mind you know difficulty to deal with stress and so on so there are a lot of you know silent effect that starts to accumulate so i think the key point is you know what will it take for you know country at large to wake up to the need and the long term impact you know, like i said it's very difficult to visualize what will happen to me you know 30 40 years out i think you know there is also this whole other culture of you live only once right you know i'm going to sleep when i'm dead you know <laughs> all those kind of you know misinformation that is almost glamorized at times you know it's a, and a lot of people buy into that because that seems more appropriate you know when you are at a certain age so i think changing the conversation is probably very hard i think it no one person alone can do it i think it's you know everything from individuals people who are you know public personalities to the government to anyone who was able to influence you know talking more about health i think i remember in i think in uh, uh, michelle obama right she has this whole movement around just i think something move i forgot you know what the phrase was right but you no know, she made it a mission for 8 years in white house to only talk about getting people to move right you know that's one effort and you know, many as such others so i think we'll have to as a country you know rise up to taking it really seriously otherwise eventually health costs will add up we can easily end up within lot of people to your point living very long but all of them need to be on some kind of medical attention continuously right you know massively increasing healthcare costs any quality of life is not great and uh, so yeah big you know large problem glad you guys are you know taking initiative to at least you know initiate a conversation on the conversation on this right uh, yeah some of the biggest mistakes you realized you were making later Yeah, so I was, you know, at some point, you know, borderline fitness freak. <laughs> uh, I would try to go to extremes, mm-hmm. you know, just push myself to the edge. Mm-hmm. And as a result, you know, I accumulated a lot of wear and tear injuries. I have a tear in my left knee. I have a tear on my left shoulder, and I have to always now manage around that. Mm-hmm. And there is no, it's not like I had a big fall or I dropped a big weight on me. It's just you know wear and tear injury without understanding things. I think earlier Nitin was talking about, you know, how. uh prehab is very important mobility is very important recovery is very important you know your weekly massages myofascial release you know trigger point therapy and so on so just understanding i think the basic fitness is fine but when you start to push yourself also understanding working with a professional trainer understanding you know the limitations of your own body mm-hmm. and designing a program which is you know designed to manage injuries because you know the one bad side of pushing too much is you know just accumulate those injuries and then sometime you know they will stay with you for rest of your life like my injuries now i have to just manage around that there's nothing i can do about those so as such a popular person right like you are infinitely more popular than us three like the three of us are known to 2% of the country you're known to maybe 80% of the country because bollywood is humongous right How is life? But it's unfair, na? No? The share yeah. of revenue then, <laughs> uh, if you see. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, hmm. it is. I agree with. You. <laughs> But as a man who has been so popular for so long, we know the hardships, right? Like we discussed it throughout the episode. Can you tell us some of the perks? And I'm smiling while I ask you this question. <laughs> Everything is to do with the brand, and if you hold that brand right, I mean, today I've probably seen the best phase of my life. Hmm. you know money's respect everything and anything and that mm. doesn't happen anywhere else right. you know uh like how does it feel like I you walk into a room and everybody knows you what what is the feeling that you get inside of love mm. and that's why you continue to do uh, what you're doing and that's why you want to improve upon yourself because you want to hold on to that legacy mm. but i can see this and i think he would agree at some level as well I feel like this is when we are the biggest fans of yours and 
this is the coolest phase of your life in a way as well because in many ways you're probably doing what you truly want to do absolutely no but but border and hera ferry <laughs> no, i don't know i think hera ferry was amazing border also i think i cried right so i mean like so the, the very few scenes and moments you know sitting at you know nitin was a budding actor growing up yeah my huh? yeah <laughs> like literally like in our room every night in our bedroom he would sit in like yeah. rehearse yeah right that's why the singing the guitar all of that yeah my Okay, I don't. So I want to use cuss words. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but but that 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 that. It's not too no, late. No, no, I'll, I'll tell you. That dream, yeah, it's yeah, never too it's late. No, no, I'll, I'll tell, tell you late. what happened. Okay, so there was one Kannada movie. What happened? I was working out in the gym, and uh, there was a producer who was to work out, and uh, there was a like one of these uh, villain scenes, villains chasing the <laughs> girl scene, and they wanted a few big guys to <laughs> run behind. <laughs> you know and then movie never released you know i mean if we did our <laughs> but you did it yeah i mean he said you know come 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 <laughs> so, so, so i went you know like i'm one of the goons running the <laughs> but that reminds me of something we've been into fitness for a long time because we used to have a poster in our bedroom of rambo right mm, yeah. without a shirt on and we would have probably posed in front of it a hundred times i think every every one would have done it yeah right? grown up doing yeah, it. that's what i said now my martial arts background came from bruce lee mm-hmm. and his poster that stayed even when we moved homes i think when they removed that poster that the the paint of the earlier paint was still there mm-hmm. they had allowed them to paint the room but not around it but not the, remove the poster right so i think we've all right so yeah. what got you into health <laughs> I think it's been a progressive journey. I think there was a you know I was always active like mm-hmm. I grew up playing sports all kind of sports even my 20s I used to play cricket I got into golf you know pretty seriously in my 20s so around same time my roommate you know we were both this guy now runs health card Samir so he was my roommate and he was um I don't think people know him you know he was <laughs> he was trying to become a model mm-hmm. and he was you know going to gym regularly within 6 month he changed completely you know his biceps were like nitin's bicep and you know mm. big chest and all mm. that and i was you know <laughs> he's, he's so happy yeah. he's so he's so happy with uh, flex you know so <laughs> he's checking you i know each time you're posing in a picture right he's like this <laughs> he's been sitting like this you know, so i had to watch it so anyhow you know and i was at that time i was mm. same height you know nearly 6 mm. feet and 60 kg mm. so really skinny mm. i was seeing like this guy you know the muscles bulging up and i was feeling like really really left out So after six month of you know that I said, dude, I need to also go to gym with you. So that's how my fitness journey started. 2007, I moved back to India, and for six month I had this arrangement where you know I would come here for three weeks, go back, uh, flying economy all the way to US, basically not sleep for 24 hours, spend one week, again come back here for three weeks, and after six month of doing that, I think my you know immunity went for a toss. One of the flight back, I reached you know back in Bay Area and. Um, I was feeling this weird kind of flu, you know, just or this headache just won't go up. Uh, I couldn't look into the light. If I move my head around, you know, I will feel everything dizzy. So I had to, you know, go to an emergency around like 4 a.m. And the doctor had a good sense to so, um, think that something's wrong with this girl. So you know, she suspected meningitis. Meningitis is basically infection of a spinal fluid, you know, uh, spinal cord and brain. So it was, you know, pretty scary. You know, when she told me that you probably have meningitis, it could be viral or bacterial. bacterial is can be quite dangerous yeah. but we won't know for next 4 days so like pretty harrowing 4 days you know i was completely isolated and eventually it came out a viral i was a bunch of you know medicines and came out of it but that was in a big wake up call i was just about 30 at the time and just going through that and just 4 days thinking about all kind of things you know maybe you know end is near and all kind of those things so i think that was a big wake up call i think um, from there on i became you know i learned lot more about generally immunity that started in the whole rabbit hole of looking into fitness and health and food and sleep and this that and it's been now 15 years you know all kind of experimentation i'm still learning uh but yeah nice nice and any story from you bruce lee <laughs> <laughs> bruce lee Ch- tell us that. tell us something that you don't often tell people yeah that i was this little skinny kid not too tall when in school uh, probably stood number 1 or 
I'm not talking in class, but in in <laughs> in that in that row. Height wise. <laughs> height wise, because it went height right. wise. Mm-hmm. Uh, an obsessive uh, cricketer and uh, wanted to play. Played great level of cricket in school and otherwise. Uh, scared shit every time I scored. I was worried. Mm. I'd have a sleepless night because they'd call me on stage, and when you went on stage, you were alone there, and I was bloody nervous. And uh, when 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 I decided that I wanted to play serious cricket. I was at the Taj once, and I met uh, Sir Vivian Richards. Uh, I was a year, two, three years older uh, then. And when I went and met him, and he shook my hand, and I put my hand in there, it disappeared, you know. And I had never seen that size of a forearm in my life before. And the automatic choice was because people always told me, if you do weights, you get slower, and you know. Your height won't grow. So I asked him. I said, "Sir, you know, as a as an athlete, as a cricketer, why do you have such big arms? Because every cricketer, even then, was mm. very lean. Mm. And of course, when it came to India, there was a lot of pot bellies and uh, and stuff like that. But uh, he said to hit harder, son. And that stuck to me. And then I said, you know what? I need to also build that body so that I can I can hit harder." So that obsession for hitting harder is what led me to go to the gym. Nice. Your turn. Turn about. It's true. Say something that. Say something that I wouldn't know. I mean, say something deep <laughs> about your life that even I wouldn't know. Very hard. I you think. Very hard on to the think. spot startup entrepreneur. <laughs> what is going on? Come on. <laughs> Very hard to say something that Five, you don't four, know. Five, four, three, two, yeah. one. No, I th- no, I think no. In, in this health topic itself, I think. What are you most worried about in health? Do you think you'll die before your time? No, no. I think uh, I'm scared of um, more about my mind than my body right now. Because of time. No, no. Mind doesn't like just. uh like what if i get up tomorrow and i i'm not motivated to do something in life no, like how do i because what are you not motivated to do right now no i'm i'm right now i'm in a very motivated state but i i worry sometimes that what if tomorrow morning i get up and i'm not motivated so when you wake up every day what are you most motivated to do today i mean there is business there is rain matter there is kyan there most. is st- I don't know. There is. I don't know. There is. I can prioritize. I think there is a real answer, and there is an answer you will give me now. So give yeah. me the answer. I mean, you, you want, want to me, me to catch on the camera? <laughs> and then, you know, pushing me to say say some freaking sentimental stuff on the camera. A good way to promote your show, huh? <laughs> you can yeah. cut what you don't like. No, no. But I think I think uh, uh, like knowing a lot of entrepreneurs. You know, I mean, a lot of entrepreneurs look up to us. You know, like how you know other Bollywood stars might be looking up to us. and there's this illusion that you know people who have made it with money are somehow unbreakable like you know financial success somehow you know means mentally they are in a sound place right as in uh, there is something i keep talking whenever possible is that you know just because we've had financial success doesn't mean that there is no insecurity in life now i'm full of insecurities you know so uh, i'm sure he is full of insecurities you know we all many more you know the I'm sorry. But isn't that this. doesn't that bring about stability? Insecurity? No. no. Financial uh, stability. No, no. But the thing, you know, what I'm saying is, people think money solves all life problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of you course. You know. So you know, and I've realized more money has just complicated our lives. I, of course, it's it, it's given us a freedom to do what we want to do. But more money just you know just the way people think of you as a person and you know everything changes and. So we're very different with money. I don't think. uh how do i put this i am more businessman like he's more startup founder like does that make sense is that fair so the thing money doesn't like you know like, like it's not like he's spending the money but he enjoys making the money i enjoy more like getting the love <laughs> in the sense you know like you know people same people the growth someone else is growth yeah, the startup you know, that you back yeah, and, the, and the high of giving Yeah, I mean, in a sense, in a yeah. way. Yeah. I mean, not even that. Like you know, like I'm very, uh, I interact with our 
customers quite a bit, you know, so on a bunch of forums. When someone says something good, you know, like I'm so excited. Like that excitement doesn't, money doesn't bring it anymore. I mean, it used to bring it at one point. I think I kind of hit that point where beyond a certain point, money stopped mattering, you know, making a difference to the Thank life. Thank God you didn't uh, take up acting then. You won't survive. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay, so I'll start so you guys can say what I do or something similar. What I'm doing for my health now is my biggest issue is I can't sleep because I start work early and I work out late in the night. I struggle with five hours, five and a half hours. But the new thing I learned from Huberman, I sit in this balcony, stare at the sun for 20 minutes while I'm reading a book every morning, 20, 30 minutes. I do intermittent fasting, so I don't eat for 16 hours. First meal is at 2 p.m. I have a coffee before that at 11. First meal, I have a AG one. Then I have fish oil. I have vitamin D. Yeah. And in the night when I work out, I have a LMNT. And then I have a protein shake after my workout. And then I go to bed. I don't yeah. know if it's working or not. We'll find out someday, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, like, uh, what has worked for me you know, to remain consistent over the last two, three years in terms of fitness has been getting up early and getting it done first thing in the morning. Uh, because I've realized that every time I postpone it, never some happens. distraction it comes. never happens. You know? So second uh, is, I, like I said earlier, you know, just getting workout early means my food choices for the day are almost always much better. Um, I, I find uh, playing a sport, very relaxing. So I try to get a game of some sport every week, at least once or twice. Uh, this this habit of an activity tracker, I think, has just been brilliant. You know, like today, activity trackers are available by three, four thousand rupees. Yeah. You know, so you, you know, I have like a calorie tracking, so it keeps going on. So it, I'm accountable at the end of every night, saying that I've moved this much at least. So. Uh, that is in terms of, and then having a hobby. So I, I, I play the guitar, I sing a bit. I'm always constantly trying to learn some new skill set. Uh, uh, in terms of nutrition, I experiment. So I don't know if you know if I should be sharing every single thing that I'm experimenting with. But right now, my cycle, you know, like what I'm doing right now is I have I get up and have a coffee in the morning first thing, black coffee, just wires me for the workout. Um, I'm having. We both are having athletic greens. Um, we, um, I'm having vitamin D, omega, um, multivitamins. AG1, multivitamins, both? They're the same yeah. thing, no? Yeah. I mean, yeah, this is that what I endo has given. Uh, then a whey protein after the workout. Um, and usually I make sure I have three full meals and each of the meal is balanced, so there is protein. One of the hacks that I've realized is because I have the habit of eating too much, I always start with some salad. So there's always some green that goes and kind of fills me up. So, you know, it's like a hack I've found for myself. Super salad before the meal. Yeah, super salad before the meal. And uh, I have a dessert problem. Uh, so luckily, you know, uh, because of that, ditch the guilt startup that we are <laughs> supporting, you know, I get my All special All the call job. center sales skills are <laughs> coming out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I, I think I think that. And, and generally, um, I think mental health is something that I care about quite a bit. And um, we, we keep discussing about it. It's just not to keep anything in my mind. Mm -hmm. He's very good at that. Like, oh my God. I'll, I'll just, you know, there's anything that's bothering me, I make sure I'll, before I sleep. I'll, I'll tell you a story, okay? So, I used to be, how do I, how do I describe this in a nice way? I used to date a girl, okay? And, uh, lockdown chal raha whatever, like, uh, and we both were in one house together and it was a long time, right, lockdown. Right. And we had broken up at that point of time. So, Nitin's advice to me, right, like, I'm like going through <laughs> going through a breakup. We're like getting like reasonably intoxicated every night for two months. We're both put on five kilos each. And he's like, you have to cry. 
You don't have to mean it. Do drama. Sit in no, front of me. No, not drama. I said you need to talk it out. No, no, you're not drama. I said if you talk it out, you'll cry. You know that's really. No, <laughs> it was not that. He's like, just pretend to cry. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think uh, like this, this whole being authentic. What he was talking about. I think from the time I've started doing that, I think I, I'm max. Like you know, two things that has brought freedom to my life. One is, of course, money and etc. But second is this: just not keeping anything in your mind. You know, just, just, yeah. just getting it out there. It doesn't matter. You know, so because you postpone it, it's just complicated. You know, so yeah. I think these are all my life hacks. You know, so. I think you know what you said now is is something that I think I've been practicing for the last seven, eight years, and it's worked like magic. It's the time factor. Everything, something disturbed. Whenever something disturbed me, I understood how long that stayed with me. And the hack was to reduce the, that amount of time. The next time something happened, mm-hmm. I tried to reduce that amount of time, and then I said, "I'm going to forget about it." Now I think I've I've reached a stage where I can instantly, instantly in the sense in a day or two, you know, say, "You know what? Doesn't matter to me, and I'm not going to take care of. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it. It it's happened." You know, I realize that uh, whether it is any form of fitness. I've done that. I've been there and done that. It's been given a new term now, right. you know, because you don't have that strength. So, get into the zone where I'm comfortable doing uh, what I'm doing and not being complexed by anybody. Nobody's arms, nobody's bicep, nobody's triceps, nobody's abs. Uh, you know, unnerve me or am I jealous of? I'm comfortable in my own space. And I'm very, very, very clear that ninety percent of them are not as pure as I am. Purity from a point of view of abusing myself right. from a health perspective, right. no other way. So that is my USP, and and that is what I'm working on because I know I might extend uh, that process of aging a lot more than others might be able to. So keeping things simple. And I've realized that the simpler I'm keeping things, it's working like magic for me. Whether it's it's the way I look or the way I behave or my 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 physique, the physical structure. I said, let it be all natural. And in today's world of 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 the virtual world, the more honest you are, and the more you accept and 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 say yes, this is something I don't have because this generation. If nothing else is a very very honest generation, corruption is something that they'd never be able to handle. I mean, I can't imagine my kids going to someone and saying, "Sir, ye chahiye jugar, jugar." They say, "Papa, what jugar?" What you? So I think I've learned, picked up all this from them, and that's why I've become far more confident. Also, you know, I'm someone who says I will not resort to all this. So I think these are the things that I've taken from others, and I guess also started believing and appreciating others for what they are achieving, what right. they are doing, rather than their cinema, cinema, movie, success, failure. I think a lot of other things. So, and post-pandemic even more so. Right. You know. Standing. I think uh, for my health, a routine. So for me, you know, for health is both. I think uh, lifestyle choice, but also a you know, very strong hobby. I just enjoy this space a lot. So a lot of things I do that are not necessarily because they are going to make me healthy. So with that caveat, you know, but I sleep at nine. Today I'm not going to sleep at nine. Thank you. <laughs> but I enjoy the conversation. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, have, generally... have we reached interval time yet? No? <laughs> Halfway is done. No, no. Yeah, I was. We'll finish in the next three hours. Three done, hours. Done, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I generally sleep at nine. Uh, get up at five. I'm in the gym by six. Before that, I do some meditation, etc. Something you know, just prime myself, think through like what matters to me that day, etc. I try to spend two hours in the gym. Doesn't mean I work out for two hours, yeah. including you know warm up. I'll just you know walk leisurely on a treadmill for some time, a little bit loiter around, just you know get the vibes of the gym. Think about you know things. At some point, get into a proper workout. Uh, post that, I try to do some meditation or yoga every single day. Around eight, I'm out, and I get you know my first meal of the day eight thirty. 
along with supplements i take bunch of supplements lot of them i have no idea whether doing something good for me or not <laughs> i <laughs> check my blood work every 3 months religiously it's like you know 20 page report i get <laughs> most of numbers also don't move <laughs> and if they move they are mostly noisy but i like it you know that's become part of habit my second meal of the day is around 3 pm so usually you know i have a i'll be in a meeting and somebody will bring my food and i'll just 3 pm sharp i'll eat and basically i'm done with that so that gives around 16 17 hours of fasting i'm pretty big on lot of you know this wellness therapy so we talked about heat and sauna i think they are part of my weekly schedule massages you know different type of my official releases uh just experimenting with different other things i try to go out of my way and try something new I'm right now trying to figure out how to get into you know aerial yoga so i think that's the new thing you know that uh, uh i was trying to do pilates you know just very beginner basic level uh, about 6 months ago and so on generally experimenting uh i one thing that i really really want to work on and not able to make lot of progress on is just really having deep meditative time you know throughout the day my ideal setup will be an hour in the morning yeah <laughs> and then few times during the day and doing you know these different pranayam practices like after 2 hours when like you know take my break i would love to do 5 minute of some kind of you know alternate nostril breathing or vastrika or you know there are so many you know different names being given like but they are all you know conditioning uh, your lungs and you know regulating lot of body metabolism again in the evening have a like 30 to 45 minute of wind down reflection about their day i'm not able to do but that's something i'm actively working on i think uh, hopefully get there this year super yeah, yeah. no i think that's it for tonight uh, thank you everyone <laughs> for coming anna thank you so much no, for no, flying down all the way from Pleasure. bombay Mukesh, so, sorry for pulling your leg a little bit sorry, in the beginning. Yeah. Hopefully, I made up for it <laughs> eventually. Yeah, more than made up for it, and yeah, absolutely yeah. all cool. Him, I don't have to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, everyone, and <laughs> see you next time. Hi, I'm Nikhil Kamath. I'd love to know what you thought of the episode. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.